Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Knife Nuts podcast. And I believe it's the first episode of 2018. Am I right? Very. It's funny. I tried to make that like we didn't just record this, but we <laughs> and did do it again and do it again. Yeah, yeah. These, these things these things happen. It's only awkward for us. Everybody else doesn't even realize it because there's a lot going on here, guys. There's a lot a going lot. on. So a lot going on in the knife industry and in the Knife Nuts podcast world. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I'd like to announce that we've officially sold out and have our first sponsor. <laughs> Yay. Which is amazing considering our content has mostly not been about knives and mostly about, I don't know, the same fucking four topics like having sex with animals mm. and metal. Animals yeah. raping other animals. Yeah. It's, we... All right. Let's not even talk about it. Come on. You get, it's just going to put thoughts in your head. <laughs> okay. So anyway, Matt of Tackle Outdoors was nice enough to partner with us and do something special for all of the Knife Nuts podcast listeners. So Tackle Outdoors is uh, a brand new website where you can actually buy knives and outdoor stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, we don't really care where you buy your stuff, but if you choose to buy your stuff at Tackle Outdoors, Matt is offering free shipping on $50 and up and 10% off with the coupon code Knife nuts. Knife nuts. Yeah. Well, that sounded very professional. We might actually get a second sponsorship with that with that quality. <laughs> that was impressive. I don't know. I was I'm just standing here holding this blue microphone. You did the retail voice. Like that's like one octave higher than your normal voice when you're like <laughs> trying to sell something to a customer. You did that with the my with the endorsement. My actual job sometimes bleeds through. Yep. Yeah, it's mm. it's going to be very exciting, and it's not just knives. They have a lot of like outdoor stuff. If you're not like me and you like doing things like outside, um, you know, in like the trees and shit, they've got all the things you might need for your <laughs> in, the woods. in the trees. Yeah, you know, I mean, I I might. Well, like, well, I'm going to hit them up for some fishing shit once it gets close to that season. Yeah, that's. that's I think idea. there's fishing shit. Absolutely. There's like other woods wood shit. You guys got to film. Yeah, you guys got to help me here. I'm dying. <laughs> I don't know this stuff. Now, is, you know so little about outdoors, you call it tree shit. <laughs> tree <laughs> shit. My, still, my favorite Knife Nuts moment is when I said that my grandparents were outdoorsies because they're buried in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, so call back yeah, to, that, what, episode two or three? Something yeah, that's like that. true. That's my favorite moment. But yes, those are very exciting. And you guys will actually get additional content out of this because Matt has been nice enough to offer us to review some knives from his stock Absolutely. so we'll get some real knife content going actually from this too he he is just getting the website started too and he's already got awesome brands and stuff like that so go on there he's got Wee knives kershaw uh medford i mean crazy stuff on there so go take a look yeah and someone get that riot uh leong ma sdc before it sells out for like 250 don't bucks. don't tell them about that i'm actually gonna buy that <laughs> yeah. well all right I, I won't post it until you buy it Anyway, I hear there was also a small, you know, convention or something in Las Vegas. Yeah, a bunch of shit. It was shit shit show, I think. Uh, a bunch of sweaty show. mouth breathers uh, assembled in one room, as they do. Guess, no, no, we're everyone knows we're in three different states right now. Did it? It was like an anti us joke. Go on. I don't even get it. I, I didn't get that at all. <laughs> None of that. That went right over my head. But obviously, we're talking about SHOT Show. We are. SHOT Show 2018. And it wasn't necessarily a shit show when it came to knives, but there were a few things that we we take uh, issue with. Yeah, I mean, overall, I was pretty happy with some manufacturers' offerings and maybe not with others so much. Um, but yeah, where, where do we want to kick it off? Did anyone get anything new in, actually? Is there anything fun to talk I, about before that? I got it. I actually got a few things in. Yeah, I did too. So go first. Uh, I got that Boost Blades Mini Arrow. Oh yeah, mm. very nice little knife. Like it a lot. Yeah, they those things like sold like hotcakes, but there's also tons of people reselling them. So I I don't know. I guess they were smaller than people realized or something. But there are it was bunch smaller than I imagined when I took it out of the box, and I and I and I kind of was pleasantly surprised by that actually. Yeah, I mean, it's how how. What blade length and stuff is that? I would say it's like a three inch blade, but four inch handle. It's yeah. it's very tiny. It's yeah. very petite 
in, in See, every that's way. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't want to mm. make these little ones. You know, it's they just seem. Why strong. people? It, they're good. I like it. Yeah. How, what's the blade thickness? Thin. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty thin. It's I don't know thin. what it is. Point thin thousands. Point thin thousands. There's no, yes. there's no denying. <laughs> it, we're gonna get into the blade or to shot show, and there's no denying that this is absolutely the season of smaller knives. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely that's the I wave. wrote down shrink I call it a shrink show because that was that was everyone's big announcement is that we've done smaller versions of our knives and yes. that's what we're presenting. The mini this, this mini that, yeah. Yes, the mini it's, everything. It's shrink funny, show. I was actually talking uh, to Greg Geckel of uh, Quest Custom Knives, another big friend of the podcast. Um, he was asking, so I was thinking about, you know, I wanted to get your thoughts on doing like a, a thicker bladed version of the uh, their gents, his gents spear point, nope. which I which I already feel is named for irony, and I was just like, nah, bro. Uh, that's not that's not the wave it. anymore. He was like, good, that's what I thought. Also, it's so like, it's not without irony that the I don't know hobby that gets accused most of overcompensating, besides maybe cars, is now going towards smaller things. I still feel like the the king of overcompensation is guns. True. I don't know. If our small guns in that? I forgot that shot show is actually a gun show. And, well, you know, the gun show a small the, part. <laughs> Before we even start going into the guns, I'm actually excited. I mean, going into knives, there was actually one gun that I'm actually kind of excited about and might actually buy. What's up? That uh, Sig P365. Yeah. Yeah. I think that looks pretty good. Tiny little good. thing. Ten plus one. And it's got its uh, a proprietary rail system, but I'm surprised they even put one on there to begin with. I will Google this. Well, you've got to accessorize, man. That's add, adding a well, light yeah. laser is like a, a 3D milled Timascus pocket clip for you. And now Sig is making all their own component, you know, their own sites and shit. So they mm -hmm. want you to to yes. mount their shit, you know. Since I have almost nothing to contribute here about guns, I will say that this is a very aesthetically pleasing gun. I I think it has nice proportions for such a small gun. But the yes, uh, you're talking about the piece. Yeah, the P, it's a micro compact. Is that even? Did they just invent that? That's not a real thing, right? No, no, nah, not really. I, I, I mean, there, there weren't. Uh, there was not a really popular category for you know seven or eight round carry pistols. Uh, I don't know, maybe ten years ago, and it seems like. Every, once Glock gets into something, now it becomes known as a fad. Right. And then Everybody you have people like shoot. Levon who are like, well, dimensionally, I want a Glock 43, but uh, I'm going to get the SIG instead. Pretty it's much how I That's yeah. pretty. I, I, but I like Glocks too, so I don't know. I'm not that kind of guy. Looks nice. Um, okay, so let's talk about knives for the rest of this thing. Yeah. What did, so what did you get in? Did we just totally oh, miss yeah. that? <laughs> we got the uh, booze, you got the booze mini arrow, which was cool. I, got, I also got... What else I get? I got a full sized Steelcraft Bodega and Dama Steel. Yes. Very awesome knife. Yeah. And it is amazing. Yep. I like, I mean, I have the non Dama Steel one and I'm super happy with it. Yeah. This was, uh, this was, uh, it's, it's just quite a thing. I don't, I can't think of anything bad to say about it. Yeah. It's, they're just ridiculously nice. Like, mm. I feel bad for Jake having to have owned one of the field grade bodegas back in the day. In comparison, like I just think there's no contest between the field grade bodegas and the steel craft stuff. Oh, it's it's a it's night and day. Yeah, sorry, Jake. Jake, you haven't even seen this thing yet. It is awesome. I haven't handled it yet, but does it have a, a hand scribe numbering <laughs> serialization inside? Because that's all I care about. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> no, Who cares but, about but precision you, and damage steel and cracked ice finish. But you know what else it doesn't have? Some dingus didn't put a gigantic fucking lanyard bead on it and then put it oh, in a pouch. Remember that. Oh my god, who does that oh, kind of oh shit? Oh shit, it does have some numbers in it that look it quite does, poorly yeah. stamped, actually. <laughs> I've never taken this apart, but I just noticed inside one of the uh, lightning pockets. Oh wait, mine's sitting right here. Hold on. Yeah, well, mine was sitting right next to me, so I checked. That, that, that'll that be my sub-wingding of the week, is is people who uh, take a perfectly clean, fancy knife and let a three and a half pound bead dangle all over it for a year mm -hmm. and then and then trade it without mentioning the It's just scratch. basically teabagging yeah. the knife as yeah. it's in the <laughs> it's tie bagging actually. It's tie it's bagging. <laughs> we're we're not lanyard people, right? I'm certainly not. What's funny is I can appreciate a nicely sculpted bead. Yeah, I like I the suppose. beads. I just don't want them I just on a don't knife. ever use yeah. them for anything. I mean yeah. like I don't I don't need like my knife to like self flagellate. It's it's not repenting for its sins. 
<laughs> yes. For a knife without a clip, uh, you know, to have have the, having the bead hang outside of your pocket is it's, I believe, the originally intended function. So I, I've tried it. I don't know. Whatever. Has, hashtag pocket sculpture. Also, if you're terrible, it gives you another opportunity to have a gaudy skull somewhere uh, near your knife or on your person. Yes. And if, and if you have a lathe, skull. if you have a lathe for no good reason, it gives you an excuse to make Delrin beads for you and your friends. Yeah. I haven't made one in years. Is, is that all? Is that all you got, Levon? Because that seems pretty tame. I think there might have been something else, but I can't remember what it was. So what I'll do is I'll just scream it in the middle of this podcast okay. at some point. That's great. <laughs> stop one. Stop one of my rambly rants with with your new uh, acquisition. Blah! I uh, I got into a few things. Uh, most notably, the thing I'm probably happiest with is this Zebra Light SC64. Um, I finally found you a scared, flashlight. You scared me there for a second. I, uh, I, I got a zebra? When you, started oh, you, you thought it was a sex zebra, <laughs> didn't you? A sex zebra? What the fuck is a sex yeah. zebra? By the way, uh, Starboy. Starboy. Oh, you got I the Starboy. Dom Steel Starboy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dom Steel Starboy. I actually like that. Damn, that's that's two like that. Riot produced Dama Steel blades in one month. That's pretty good. I've, I have purchased... Uh, 98% of my Dama Steel collection in the past two months. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got an outrageous price on that Starboy, so. Yes. Courtesy of and someone we will not mention anymore. No, not, not on mind. the Starboy. I, that, that was on the, uh, I thought you got the on the Wii Knife. I got the Starboy the Wii from, from Knife Nah, Outlet. bro, that was, I got the Starboy from Knife Yeah, Outlet. and you got a ridiculous price on that because they just had a good deal. Yeah, but I also got the, Oh, um, yeah, you got the Wii 604, too. The 3604. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you got the, the Dama Steel just rolling in. There's a lot of made in China Dama Steel up in my place right now. Yeah. So, nice. Brian. <laughs> I got nothing to say. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I got that Zebra Light, and I'm I'm finally really happy with the flashlight. I I hate side clickies, but everything is a side clicky. Um, the reason I don't like side clickies is just because they like always accidentally activate my pocket, or you have to lock them out, and then that's just annoying. And the zebra light has this recessed button, and it just works great. It's bright as shit. It takes an eighteen six fifty, and it's like it's basically just the size of an eighteen six fifty battery. Like I, the dimensions on it are insane. It's got a really bad green tint, though. Like I know that's like a thing with zebra lights. Is this tint lottery? You either end up with one without the horrible green tint, or you end up with one with some amount of green tint. And uh, I lost. So. If if I got um, if I got a light with green tint, I would literally throw it in the trash. Which is funny because I didn't know this was a I thing. I would throw it in a creek, personally. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I have access to. So there we go. I'm just glad that you finally got a, an 18650 based flashlight because that's kind of where where real flashlights begin. Yeah, it's days. it's pretty awesome. Like the multiple, it has like three modes, and then you can have three levels for each of the modes. Um, it's pretty cool. So you have like three lows, three mediums, and three highs. Uh, a lot of customizability. It's just, it's nice. I'm really happy with now, it. Now is the, that, that's a perfect segue for my recent flashlight purchase because <laughs> my my two, my new uh, Army Tech Wizard Pro, pros, I, I did get two, technically Levon's supposed to claim one, has the oh, same, yes. has the same interface where there's, there's three, three levels and then three settings within each level, including uh, a couple of really nice Firefly modes that uh, you could, shine directly into your eye without without much the zebra light has like a 0 0.01 lumen like some yeah. absurd level that you can i don't even know how you can see but it, well it was a good month a good year so far for flashlights or something yeah didn't you get your giga thrower yeah. that fucking ridiculous thing did we not talk about the giga thrower yet no dude no i don't oh think God. we have so but here's the thing the giga thrower I, I love i love podcasts but the giga thrower is the is like where the the Abilities of a podcast cease. Yeah, you really need to see you it. You cannot describe anything about. I can say it has like a roughly one and a half mile effective range. Other than that, everything else you just have to see it to understand. It's a big ass fucking flashlight. In case you're wondering, that's the best. It has summary. a shoulder. It has a shoulder strap. <laughs> what? It, it has a, it has a tripod a tripod mounting uh, section of the, uh, the chassis that I think started as like a 45 pound aluminum billet or so i could be making that up but again since it's words i'm going to exaggerate until you can see the photos uh, maybe we'll put some pictures up somewhere or maybe we'll do yeah. a quick video oh maybe the pictures are already up on my instagram that is true the, and mine as well it mm. would be oh. a good thing to post pictures of that because you really need to see it totally yeah all right so, so should we talk about knives 
Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I, so we just go through a list. Are do you need? One, oh, you want to talk about your acquisitions? I mean, I got in some. Yeah, I got in a few knives actually. I have the fucking roller coaster ride that is Kaiser knives. I got the T one, which everyone raved about for so long. So I figured I should get one eventually. First one was kind of terrible. I had like a little bit of lock rock and a really weak detent. I returned it. Got another one. It's got a weaker detent than I expected, but I've learned to live with it. I don't know. I'm. I I think I've had. Probably 70% of my experiences with Kaiser have been good, and about 30% have been bad. So that's not a fantastic hit rate, but it's it's okay. And then I also got in a knife that will make sense when we're talking about SHOT Show, because theoretically it debuted at SHOT Show, even though it's already on sale. It's the Benchmade Mini Crooked River. and I'll talk I have to say, that's that surprised me oh, as Oh man, a it's awesome. I, well, okay, for some reason... I can deal with the the things I don't like about the axis lock on this knife, and I'm not sure if I will on another knife. I'd have to really like the design, but all the things I don't like about the axis lock are still present. Like, it's basically a gravity knife. I mean, you just flick it with your wrist a little bit, and it opens. And actually, you know, it doesn't really have that side-to-side -side play that you almost always have. Like, this, the fit and finish on this is markedly better than any other Benchmade I've ever owned, so I'm, I am super happy with it. It's because they used your parents' cabinets. I to mean, make oh my scales. god, I can't believe how bad. <laughs> I, of all the scales, you go and look on pictures of all the mini crooked rivers. They have these nice, like, sort of dark. I mean, not nice wood, but okay. like re reasonably attractive wood. And then I get this one with this super light staining that looks exactly like my like geriatric parents' cabinets from their house that have not been replaced since the seventies. It's inc the the likeness is uncanny. I encourage you to go to my Instagram it, it, and check it. It's very fun. Yeah, it's, I mean, those things are probably from the house was built in 74, so those are original. <laughs> so, if I ever screw up the handle scales, I'll just start stealing pieces of my parents' cabinetry and uh, make new handle scales out of it. Go back another decade, and probably the carpet was the same color as the pivot collar. Oh, God, yeah, no, they had some, <laughs> they used to have rust-colored stoves. It probably would have fit if this had, like, any kind of bronze stuff or brass stuff. Yeah, they'd, There you go. Oh, God. The 70s were a dark time. But yeah, I'm very happy with the knife otherwise, like surprisingly so. It's it's very cool. Um good so maybe maybe Benchmade's doing things good this year? I don't know. We'll see. It well, th that Crooked River is uh the, at least the mini Crooked River seems to be uh I don't know. It's it's the knife of the year so far, which isn't saying much yeah. at the end of January, but <laughs> yeah. it is it is definitely the That's a hot take. Uh, it, yeah, it's uh, it's nothing but super raving feedback, and a lot from people like you who aren't necessarily Benchmade fans. Right. But but that knife yeah. has uh, has got a little bit of uh, the 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 special factor of uh, something that whatever knives have sometimes. Yeah, I'm I'm super pleased with it. But yeah, it's, it it is it was supposedly debuting at Shot Show 2018, so we can we can jump into that now. Where do we want to start with? Should we start with with the probably most important company with ZT? Maybe are we, to you. Are we going to go right out and say that they're the most important company? Uh, they're definitely the most anticipated, I'd say, because everyone else yeah. teases everything to some extent, and ZT just shows their stuff and just debuts it at SHOT Show, essentially. That's correct. I'll give you that. They have some mid-year right. releases and stuff, but like SHOT Show is really, like, they don't give anything before that. So we just combine Kershaw and ZT right now? Yeah, sure. We just do that? All right. So let's talk about... Uh, ZT yeah. first, because there's only three of Can them. Can I start by saying that ZT gets such an unbelievable amount of, like, hate that is, it's, honestly, like, it has jumped the shark from, like, legitimate criticism to just, like, obnoxious, like, they can't do anything right to, if the internet is to be Are believed. you talking about the pivot tool? Just anything. Like, the deal, the deal nobody is happy tool. with ZT anymore. These, these three knives look incredible to me, and, like, they're exactly the kind of things people wanted, and, and everyone is upset about something about them. It's crazy. No one else gets this kind of scrutiny. Like, Well, well, here's I, the thing. I, I have a comment that'll be similar to what Levon's about to say, I bet. Okay, go for it, Jake. No, no, no. You go. Well, I, I was know. I was going to say that, I mean, they are resting on their laurels a little bit at this point. Um, it was kind of, you could predict what they were going to do with a lot of this stuff. True, you know? but it's like exactly what people wanted. I get it. I Sure, I understand that. And if they're giving, I'm, it's not like I'm not going to buy all three yeah, of these exactly. designs. Same here. Right? But if you look at what other, the other manufacturers are doing, they're pushing the envelope and, and coming out with a lot of new designs, a lot of really cool stuff. Um I'm actually more impressed with what they did with the Kershaw line. Yeah, I mean, the, the Natrix stuff is really cool. But, like, hasn't ZT pushed the boundaries enough? Like, 
uh, you can't push boundaries enough when you're in business and it's a very competitive market. That's true. You have to continue to push the boundaries or else you're just staying stagnant. I mean, at, and then you lose a customer maybe, base. Maybe not for the the greater knife community, but at least for American manufacturing for knives, they're still oh, they're, they're still hitting crazy price points for the quality of their stuff. Here's the thing. When you're on top, you you have to stay there, you know? You have to do everything you can to stay there. Yeah, I mean, so I, I, true. We, we, I think we're extra critical about them because we're cheerleading that American-made company. That's very true. And and the other piece of that is the reason, I mean, you could argue against it and say, well, what about knives like Case and, you know, Buck and knives that have been uh, a staple for a long, long time? There's nothing traditional about about the ZT category you know what i mean the the whole idea is that it's innovative and it changes and it pushes Correct. boundaries yeah you know so they can't rest on on anything about you know the collectability or the expectations that that collectors have with a traditional shape or uh and you know it, how accurate it is to an original buoy or whatever the case is you know innovation is what's what sells that category in the first place so no, I will say that they, at Shot Show they have historically only showed bread and butter models, stuff that you know anyone can buy in the lower price points, and they generally wait for Blade Show to for the knock your socks off limited edition stuff. Yeah, I mean, so I think I I I know there's like a moratorium on what you can say. I I don't I'm not even going to bother. I was going to say I don't I don't know if this is the only three models they're doing, or if they're doing more, or if they're just like playing it slow this year. There'll probably be a bunch of like sprint run versions of existing models that 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 trickle out over the next couple of months. Yeah, I don't e I don't even know which one's my favorite because I like all three of these so much. I I'm super excited about these. I'm leaning towards the what's the uh, the R J Martin one. The 0609? 0609. Let me tell you what, and, and, I, and it would be the Sinkovich one if it had a full tie frame. Oh yeah, it would be basically the Polychotky. Yeah, I mean that's what I want. Yeah. Like th the carbon fiber is cool, and I liked it on the small knife because it really, um, you know, kept the weight down on that little guy. Yeah. But on this, like, it's just kind of like it looks. Carbon fiber is it's now. This is where we are in this world now. Carbon fiber kind of looks cheap. Yeah, it's, it's kind of sad. <laughs> there's no, there's nowhere left to go now. Like, isn't that weird? Yeah, the like, carbon fiber's played out now. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, I don't know what left what there is left for us. Uh, I don't necessarily like the blue handle on the three ninety three, but like, yeah, it looks alright. It's right. basically a production three ninety two, and that's the three ninety two is a going, great knife. People are going to go nuts for this. I think I like the three ninety three better than any of the three ninety two models. So that's very exciting to me. And mm -hmm. then that's pro that's probably a hot take. Is it? Yeah, as maybe. you call <laughs> them, yeah. Maybe it's a kind of hot take, but yeah, the Sinkovich one is probably my favorite, and then the R J Martin, and then the Hinder. But I'm. I'm super happy with all of them. I'm very excited for these. I think April, apparently, is what people are saying is when these are coming out. Sure. But they're also nothing under $200 this year so far. And and they don't look like under $200 knives, yeah. to, be, to, be, to be fair. Yeah, the, the 600... I'm surprised they're keeping them under $300. Yeah, two, so. the, the 609 is going to be 220 and the rest are going to be 240 So Wow, that's that's actually pretty damn good. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm excited. I don't know... They're, are they called? They're not calling it the pivotless pivot anymore. Now it's the R.J. Martin see-through pivot. Uh, yeah, is it because pivotless pivot is basically just false advertising? It is. It is an impossible paradox, but it sounded good. So I just don't understand that it's it's basically just a hollow tube, and then that it's riding, and then then it's threaded it's, on the outside. What Strider's been using. For yeah. Since I the just, dawn of time. I don't understand why that's really an innovation. I I th they, I think they they need to point out as many points as possible as innovations. They had a an exploded view of it at one point that showed the whole thing. I don't I don't know if it actually was that interesting. Let me see if I can find that. I mean, they're calling it the STP. Maybe it's just a a, a shout out to our fallen hero <laughs> of the Stone Temple Pilots. <laughs> <laughs> Some, I, someone's a big old fan. They really love Scott Wayland and cocaine. I am. <laughs> my my comment is pivot. I also prefer the six oh nine. Yeah. And uh, at, in keeping with the Shrink Show twenty eighteen theme, that knife is so much skinnier than I was expecting it to what, be. What the six oh nine? Yeah, it looks like you think it's going to be a regular ZT, and then you know you see the view from the yeah, top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really and thin. it's like holy shit. Yeah, it's very, so it's, very. It's very, using uh, like three millimeter stock for the blade, and then the 
the handles can't be more than three millimeters each either. It's w- very thin. I was very surprised because it's, it's not milled out yeah. at all, and it's what like three point three ounces. So, and it's full tie. That's that's pretty impressive. I do like that one. I think that's going to be the first one I pick up. Yeah, it depends on what order these. You come better out in. you better get the tool too. Yeah, you're... and then become so enraged by the fact that it uses a tool that that you go on a killing spree. Yeah. <laughs> And and you don't stop until everyone is dead because that is what the comments section oh my God. of YouTube and Instagram and blah, 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 has been As all if, about. So here's what I think. None of the people who complain about the tool can afford to buy the knives, these knives anyway. So it doesn't matter. Uh, the I, I, just, I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> do you guys... I thought that this is what Dave was getting at earlier when he was saying Th- that. That is that part he, of it. Yeah. He, he just can't do it. You know, can't get credit for they anything really anymore. But uh, are you familiar with the God. autistic screeching meme? That is basically when people release a knife that can't be disassembled, it is just autistic screeching, or you can now call it Shabazz screeching. <laughs> Shout out to Nick Sh- Shabazz, by the way. Yeah. Uh, no offense, Nick. Just, he's just a big proponent of being able to disassemble things. So, And people have definitely jumped on that a little bit more recently. For better or for yeah, worse. Yeah, for better or for worse, certainly. What about Kershaw? Um, uh, I was. It warmed my heart to see Kershaw actually trying to do some yeah, stuff. Yeah, they didn't suck. Like, Did, nothing sucked, really. Yeah. I didn't think anything really sucked. Oh, no, besides that fucking blue, the outright, the one that is just... Oh, yeah, blue. that that looked like a gun show knife. Oh, Let's my just put God, it, it looks so cheap. Like, are you going to get that out of, like, a plastic jar at a gas station? Yeah, that's, that's where that shit again. belongs. Slam dunk yeah, that, that shit that, right in the trash. That, was, that is definitely a low point. Oh. But everything else is, is fine. It's a nice design, too, which is the saddest part. <laughs> I love how they're going balls deep with the, the Natrix design. True. And just milking the hell out of the triple seven. And hey, why wouldn't they? You know what I it mean? It was a cool design, but yeah, they're definitely it, taking it for all it's worth at this point. Uh, and it's like we, there's there's one for everybody. There really is. So first off, you can get the regular Natrix in a bunch of colors. Yeah, which also right. now have KVT and are not assisted, so that's pretty cool. Or at least no. the new one. That the no, there's there the regular ones still ha- still have speed assist. Do they? There's there's an extra large one. Mm-hmm. That is on ball bearings. Well, it says the carbon fiber one and the Natrix black. The ones that are being released for 2018 are on KVT. Yes. Even though there's a normal size. That is correct. That's weird. That is correct. Because they're like the normal. There's one that's. Let me see how I can do this. There's a smaller one in copper. With there's, two. there's a smaller one in copper. And that one is speed, is speed safe. Is it? Uh, no, KVT manual opening with flipper. No, um, I, re- I distinctly remember the I, copper one. To being... checked off every one of my boxes for my my budget purchase of uh, oh wait wait a minute uh, that little copper one. one is on bearings yeah guys go to the fucking website and, this is why I like this shit yeah. that's fucking amazing yeah go to the website I have all these whole shits linked I set the link to the Google Doc well well if that's the case I think I just basically um, yeah it's prepared myself for it to have speed assist and I still liked it anyway yeah which was crazy yeah no it's gonna have bearings. That's crazy. A subframe lock, full copper handle, and heavily, heavily milled, like weight reduced copper. Yeah, frames. So, so it's only three, three point seven yeah. ounces. So let me, let me, let me say something. This is gonna, and here's gonna be your. This is gonna be a hot take. So you remember the whole? Um, obviously, this thing is called a Natrix to to give a little dig at Marfione. Right? Yeah, we all know about that. Yep. It, here's the defense for something like that lawsuit for the. For that design and and the subframe lock, like a product line like this for a big company like like ZT and Kershaw, has to be conceived a long time ago, right? So they have to protect that market because they know they're going to come out with a whole bunch of designs, which is going to become their bread and butter in 2018, and they probably knew this in 2015. Wow. Do you follow what I'm saying? This is a fucking hot take conspiracy theory right here. I love it. Keep uh, it's going. It's not a conspiracy. This is purely business. So they had to squash whatever competition was happening with that design ahead of time. They even let it go for a little while. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't right away because they knew it really wasn't going to affect them in that higher end price category and stuff like that until later on. So they said, you know what? Now it's time to squash this and protect our, our IP. So I think that this was always in the cards for them uh and you know it takes a long time for a lot of this stuff to go from concept to uh to production with these companies so i think i think the writing was on the wall for a lot of this unlike Uh, unlike night morning design it takes more than one day for the knife to go from cad to (laughs) manufactured 
you you sneeze and and night morning design has the, something else to show. New knives. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but he did he did open up that that uh, interview at least uh, the Blade HQ interview with um on the ZTN talking about the importance of the 777 and the popularity of the 777 and uh, you know to me it just jumped out as uh, l- you know listening to your to your customer base your customer yeah. base sure i mean the the last few Damascus herringbone 777s that i saw sold for like t- in the 2000 to 2500 dollar range um and that's that really says a lot about the importance of of that that model. So yeah, I mean, there's definitely demand for the design. That's what I had to let mine go for. That was the only amount of money that I would take for that knife because it was amazing. Yeah. So there's definitely there's a Natrix for everybody now, but the copper one is definitely the standout, the little one. And there's actually one more Natrix that's not called a Natrix. Yeah, the, the bare knuckle. The bare knuckle. I'm so knuckle. excited about this one. This one's awesome. USA made aluminum handled triple seven, basically. Yeah, it's on it's bearings. The, it's the blur of our generation. Yeah. Oh. Four, 14 C twenty eight N, which I love seeing come back. Mm. What a time to be alive. <laughs> All right, Drake. <laughs> uh it's yeah, it's gonna be like fifty six dollars. Some retailers already have them up for pre order. Insane. Yeah. 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 Which is also like fifty percent off map. Like who does that? That doesn't sound right so, to me. Here, here's what's really funny. Um, Jake and I were talking yesterday, and he was he felt bad about what we were saying about CRKT. Okay, <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, and I'm just gonna own up to that. Fine. Yeah. So, and I understand. You know, we try to be fair and things like that. But you look at what Kershaw is doing, and they're offering stuff in the same price range that doesn't suck. Yeah, that's true. Aside from so the sky blue piece of shit, like the rest of this is pretty great. Right. And to be honest with you, and we'll put our money where our mouth is, and Jake and I were talking about this too. We're going to pick up a couple of the new CRKT designs. We're not going to talk about them much on this podcast, but because um, there really wasn't much that I was... We already went through their catalog in a previous episode, and there wasn't anything new uh, at Shot Show. On yeah, their t- there was nothing. I, I it was how violent we were during that episode that made made me feel like maybe someone should take a a, a different approach with this. <laughs> maybe one of us needs to have a slightly less negative attitude about about this company. I know. I I respect CRKT. They've been in in business for a very long time, and they've done a lot for the industry. I just think they've sort of lost their way recently. Yeah, but I mean. Kershaw seems, certainly seems to have found it. I like all the Sinkovich designs. They've got two for mm-hmm. Kershaw, and then they have <laughs> one for CT. Yes, with the worst name oh, in the God, history the of... fucking concierge. Oh, my God. I mean, I appreciate how... How do you take a fucking awesome... Now, don't get me wrong. It's based on the, the, the sheer... It's a... the, the Sinkovich design Shirogorov knife. Yeah, the, the, cannabis, the cannabis, which you can't really market to, you know, like Anything. middle America at Walmart, so... So, like, like, what's a word that starts with C? Concierge. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. it's a very non-threatening name. I mean, yeah. it's almost too and, non-threatening. And didn't someone give that an award yeah, already? Everyday Carry said it was the best in show. EverydayCarry.com. Mm. Questionable. Yes. But the other the other uh, Kershaw Sinkovich, the Atmos, also looks quite nice. I think this one's a subframe lock. They're letting him use Oh, no, this one's just a liner lock. Anyway, um, fun fact, I'm on the Kershaw website, and Kershaw does not display the price for Canadian because you cannot import flipper-assisted knives. Oh, geez. They've mm-hmm. already caught up with that. Yeah, that's not going to be fun. Yeah, that's, that all happened very, very quickly. Yeah, they're already saying that you can't buy their knives direct from them. Interesting. That boggles the fucking mind. Yeah, I didn't realize that it had, like, whatever got into effect past legislation yeah, that, that was a straight up coup yeah it sucks for that was like an overnight that was one of those not that like they waited till half of congress went home family needed the 51 votes and those 51 assholes stayed behind kind of thing yeah very shady goings on up there sorry, sorry to our canadian I feel really friends bad. i feel bad for you guys yeah, that's that sucks i don't i don't really know how you're supposed to they're they're very specific them. too this this is not this is not being executed in a the typical generic way like uh i forget where i read this i think it actually might have been on budget life forums but there's there's verbiage in there that specifically you can't just tighten down the pivot and send it over the border like we always used to it specifically says you know if you modify or uh, you know make any changes uh to whatever i think it even used the word pivot which is what blew my mind mm-hmm. uh, 
then you know they're going to loosen the pivot, flick it, and then it's going to be uh, flagged. Yeah. It's what funny. if you se- send it? The, all these fuckers take their knives apart anyway. Send it as a I kit. did that actually. It's all yeah, <laughs> yeah. That I, that I sold my Laconico Magnus custom to a guy in Canada. I disassembled the whole thing and signed it to him in pieces. Yeah, that's. I, I mean, they've been doing uh, autos that way for a long time. The spring comes in a separate package. Yep. Well, that's what I actually do. Did with uh, uh, Brian Ty. I sent a knife in for service. I just disassembled it and put it in a in an actual box. So I guess that's just the way people are going to have to do it. Or that considers a mod is considered a modification. <laughs> Disassemble it. <laughs> Some, yeah. yeah uh, it's n- no fun, but Kershaw, one thing noticeably absent is they didn't add any more autos when a bunch of other companies are doing a bunch. I, I, we don't need to talk about Gerber, but Gerber's line was like entirely autos this year. Mm-hmm. And, I, and uh, American made too. Yeah. Which is- Mm. Yes, yes. Although perhaps not giving a good name to American made products though, because I can't imagine that could be awesome. Well, also Kershaw's launch series has a has a lot of products in it right oh, now. Oh god, it's so and, many variants of the different colors. And I feel like they're flooding the market with them right now, so it's kind of good they haven't put out any more of them. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? They, maybe they take a year off and then introduce some more. They have mm. seven of them. And then how many permutations with the different colors and blade finishes? It's crazy. Mm. You want you want one with an orange with orange handles and a gray blade? You got yeah, it. Yeah, seriously. There's every option possible. The patterns on the last few I saw were very casual. Yes. There's mm. some, some, some horrible bad way. Hor- <laughs> some truly horrible garish color combinations, but yeah. who's next? Benchmade? Benchmade is not really that exciting at SHOT Show because they already announced everything and a bunch of the knives are already and on sale. You even have them in your yeah, hands. Like, and more of them are even going on sale as we speak. The, the, this is, as Jake was saying, with Shrink Show, everything was a mini, basically. Mini mm-hmm. everything from Benchmade. And s- some seem to be better than others. But I don't know. I like the mini Crooked River has been awesome. Um, people really like that mini, I mean, Freak. that mini Grizzly Ridge or regular size mm-hmm. Grizzly Ridge. People really like that one. Yeah, the Mini Freak, that one's on sale now. Not really a lot to say about it. Uh, no. Because these are already out, more or less. Um, still some misses, like the Axis Flipper. They have one that's like an Axis-assisted flipper. Oh, God. Yeah. That's like pretty much everything. Yeah, it's awful. Wrapped into, one, wrapped into one horrible product. Yeah, the Vector is pretty and the, terrible. And then uh, the Fixed Blade Infidel. Oh. I'm sure, I'm sure you got oh, some. Oh, my God. That. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> all right. I don't know. If you want to buy a dagger, just buy like a cheaper cold steel. One. I love how they said they said, "Oh, look, you can have an infidel for like half the price." <laughs> Except for it doesn't fold. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's everything. The the essence of what is the infidel is gone. <laughs> it's, they kept. I, I mean, the the stand out there is they kept the, the ball sack fuller. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, you, it's intact. You can't lose it. If anything, I think he was. I think he subconsciously was trying to highlight just yeah. how much of a ball sack that Fuller. Is. Which is, I mean, I hate to plug Cold Steel, but Cold Steel has a bunch of daggers that are probably way cheaper. <laughs> so just get those. And Kershaw now. Yeah, they they did a dagger. Yeah, there was a. Well said. They, Everybody seems to have a dagger. Yeah, Fox now. Knives yeah. has a, had a Brian, dagger. Brian, it's all your Brian, fault. Brian did successfully start a trend. I must yeah, say. Hind- there's a production Hinder Maximus with a uh, Kershaw. They've got a like yep. thirty five dollar. Hinderer dagger. I have to tell you, when you make Which it, it's actually a bayonet. I think. Yeah, it is. It's bayonet. It is bayonet, bayonet grind. Bayonet grind. Yeah. yeah, but 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 I will say that it also looks like a gun show knife Ooh. when you make it into a thirty-five dollar. It number. does. He, yeah, it's it's not my favorite. All the majesty <laughs> of, of that dagger is just gone when you when you put speed safe on it. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm glad that they did some made some effort it's to fine. move away from it's, it. I mean, it's it's it doesn't do the design any injustice it's just a byproduct of the execution yeah but you know they did enough kvt knives this year i agree i'm, actually quite I'm not i'm not i'm not even mad yeah. not even which mad. is probably the first time i've ever said that about right. kershaw's <laughs> budget releases yeah you mean the mad. first time you've ever said you're not mad yeah, uh, you, are, you are the hater after all i'm just I'm, I'm like i'm like bruce banner i'm just always angry oh that that bench made gold class foray though i've never Jake, when you pointed it out, that's Oh my great. god, the screw! <laughs> Jeez. It is, oh it's god. that infuriating. We need a soundbite of that. We need I a soundbite of that. Somebody. It's the single worst I'm... screw of all time, though. Christ. I, I, sh- I just, 
there are so many times I hear people complaining about something that to me, I'm just like, what? Yeah, is this trivial? why do you care so much about that little thing? And then I got to live a day in their shoes. That little fucking screw in the piece of pearl ruined my whole fucking day. You know, what's really funny is that you, we could say that it's because it's a prototype, but they're the one company that everything was already released. Yeah. So, you know, that's the actual yeah, it's definitely thing. a production that piece. Little fucking screw. That screw is so terrible. Why didn't they just epoxy it? Like, first off, it's not going to be hard to use when it's just sitting on the shelf at a retailer unsold for like yeah. five years. So, like, I, my buddy Fred Eisen in New Hope's going to have one sitting there for 15 years. Honestly, like in post apocalyptic America, people are going to be like digging through the rubble and they will find a gold class Benchmade box. Gold class Benchmade. <laughs> yes. And they're going to be like, oh my God, I might survive another day. Wait a minute. Look at the screw in this scale. <laughs> and they throw it away. Yeah, perfect. And then they're going to get eaten by a zombie because they were so distracted by that one fucking screw. Or maybe they'll be distracted by premium features like the crown spine. They always mm. advertise that. On the gold class, Ugh. yeah. First off, the the foray is just kind of an ugly design to me. It's it's not a particularly attractive design. I don't think it was worthy of a gold class. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who's making these decisions. I think they just have like a, a bingo machine with all the names of the knives on like the little balls, and they just spin it around, take one out, and that one's getting a gold class. I think that's also how they choose the materials. If they put all the the not the names of the materials in their mouth and then sneeze. The well, that's how they got the location of that screw. Too. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, it's not in the center. It's not in the. It's not anywhere. They had a fucking dart board. And they just threw darts at it, and wherever the dart hit was where they decided to put the screw. Can you guys send a picture of that to the group? I need to see this. Oh, you haven't. Now. Oh my god. No, I have. What I'm, I'm, my I'm, search I'm history. having a hard All time. Right. I'm, I'm gonna send it, but I feel it. nervous because I don't want you to have an aneurysm when you see it. It's right, it's Brian. deeply upsetting. Brian, ha are, do you know of any of the knives that we've talked about so far? We have, links. have you looked at any of this no. stuff? N not one. Nah, I figured as much. <laughs> we have links. I put the yeah. whole thing together. He's too busy hand rubbing freaking Dr. Frunky's mini typhoon. Yeah. That fucking ruined me today. I've been like doing five minutes a day since I hurt my back <laughs> yeah. today for like an, like an hour. I was hand rubbing and I'm... Beat from it now. I, I was gonna make a really mean joke. You have me, Doctor Frunky. You ruined our friend. But uh, what was to say? Check out. Yeah, I sent. I sent the picture. Check it out in the chat. Look at that screw. You gotta. Yeah. You have to look at the knife. Like you. You gotta turn your head or turn the turn the photo to really get a feel for where that screw is and how how black it is in a in a sea of beautiful pearl. I'm totally fine with us spending ten minutes in this podcast talking about literally the location of a single screw. I'm, I think I'll make the cover of this week's podcast. It's, it, you know, it's funny how many people don't pay attention to stuff like that when they're designing it or building it. But it takes, to do it right, it takes a lot of work to always figure out where it's got to be and shit like that. You, know, you also see oh, guys who make handmade, I mean, not handmade, um, like fixed blade knives. If you see a guy that makes fixed blade knives and he drills out a bunch of holes in the handle to make them even, I mean, to make it lighter... And you have like holes running into each other, and some far lose that fucking guy's number. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> so, Brian, this is actually a great time to hear you talk about something. Um, uh oh boy, I'm not. You know, I'm not prepared for any like real talking here. Oh well, you're gonna have to because uh, Brown knives. Yeah, Craig Brown has, has a question for you. Had had a question. Um, a question. A question. Mm -hmm. It was more of a he wants your. Um, input basically and, it, and it's something that we've touched on before but i think it's it's relevant now that we see a lot of manufacturers um you know stuff so let me see let me read you exactly what he said please have brian dive a bit more into what it takes to hold tight tolerance on a cnc i think there's a lot of misconceptions that cnc equals precision automatically Nearly all, if not all production, nearly all, if not all production knife companies have CNC machines and many kni knives produced are very sloppy with poor mechanical functionality. You know, part of it, uh, I mean, there's no real reason to have that bad tolerancing if you're using machinery, but there is a lot to it. You know, I mean, you have tool wear, the, the materials that we're cutting, Christ, they make tools out of that stuff. 
you know so <laughs> mm -hmm. it's you know between that and the titaniums and and you know glass fibers and carbon fibers and all that it wears tools so quick that you have to like constantly be on that and the tolerance is to keep things tight you know you're talking tenths at a time so as your tools wear and you know you have to sit and keep uh, keep adjusting your tool wear tool compensation tool comes to to keep things right on tight it's it, it's 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 not easy you know and that's kind of why i do things in batches because when i'm set up to do things in batches and keep that tolerance is a little bit better you know it's a little bit easier to keep it in control than um you know, keep going in with something new. If you keep changing things, you know, it's uh, it, it, it's tough to keep that that dialed in. Right so on top of all of the measurements that, that have to be done, it's a matter of factoring in the time that a tool is usable. Oh, yeah. And here's another perfect example. Uh, Nick, NCC Knives, he, he texted me the other day asking me some questions about some 3D milling. He was... Ha he was seeing some tool mark it's not even tool marks it's it was he was like getting a build up on one side of the uh, on one side of the part as the tool comes around and i try and he's using a ball mill now i'm trying to you know i try telling him you know that's you know, people oh, why is the 3d stuff so much more expensive not only because of the time it takes because the tools just don't last you know so it's like if you want to keep nice finishing nice finish nice bright clean stuff it's like it's ridiculous amount of tools that you have to go through they wear you know it's tough tough materials they so does that apply to the actual end mills and the fixtures that you're using or i mean the fixtures don't really wear hmm. i mean the, a fixture can wear you know well that's a, a perfect example too so like you see what i do with well i used to do i don't seem to do it anymore is when i go in and out of the machine with a with with a frame to do multiple color anodizing and then remachining that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your fixturing has to be good to do that kind of shit because or else when you shit have might to go move. back yeah. in. Yeah, I mean, it literally moves a thousandth, and you can see in your in the patterns, you can see that. So you know, you have to have good tight fixturing, and it's 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 a lot of work. It's a lot. You know, it's, you just can't throw it together. All right. Well, I appreciate you extrapolating on that subject. I don't, did I even answer the question? I think I, I think I think I think you did absolutely. Um, uh, the point is, I think there, the misconception is there, and I don't. It probably won't go away anytime soon, and hopefully, I think it's getting better. I, I think, think so too, and I, I. But I also think that we're doing our part to to help bridge that gap and help people understand what goes into manu manufacturing in general. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting because we're talking about a very specific item, like a knife, but this is really true in every industry. It's pretty Everybody. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. Should we move on to Spyderco since they yes. debut new models? I thought they didn't do this. I thought they only showed them so at IWA. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say this right now, Dave, that I called this on the last podcast. Did you? I said, I bet they're going to have more to show at SHOT Show. And yeah, actually, I, the only reason I know I called it is because I listened to the last <laughs> podcast. Yeah, well, like, they also didn't yesterday. have that much in the new catalog. So that this kind of makes sense. Because we were, we were shitting on the new catalog. And now they have uh, like every other knife in the world, apparently, at, at SHOT yeah, Show. Yeah, first one up, the, the Spyderco Techno 2, which is such an iterative change from the Techno that I, maybe Techno people are going to be excited about this. But... Of all the Sleesh designs they could have done, I'm kind of disappointed they chose to do another Techno that is barely different from the first one. Like, this is kind of a swing and a miss to me. Sleesh has such cool, cool designs. I, I do like the changes that they made for the most yeah, part. Yeah, the standoffs instead of the backspacer and the, the different blade shape. Uh, what's interesting is I kind of like the backspacer on the old Techno. It was distinct, and all the Sleesh models it was do that. It was distinct. Yeah. That's really what it was. Um, and they went to a different blade steel. Is it X8? This one, the prototype looks like it says XHP, but they had gone to S30V on the Techno 1 after a while. I so I have no idea. I think I, th I think it's XHP. Oh, mate, what was it? No, maybe it was 20CV or something. Uh, I'll try and watch this video again and see. Yeah, if I can yeah, see I can't it. remember what it was. Also, it the Techno yeah, 2 didn't show up on every video. Um, 
that they were showing. Like, uh, I don't think it showed up in Blade HQ's video. I watched, of all people's, the late Boy Scouts video, and it showed up on there. Oh, yeah. It's XHP. This I'm looking at the video right now on Knife News. It's uh, XHP. So that's what the original Techno was, was until they switched it. It was. Mm -hmm. So that that's good. Go back to XHP. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I just happen to personally like Sleash's knives in general. Designs. So I was mm -hmm. upset that they did another one of these. Oh, they also uh, t toned down the blade stock. Yeah, I guess it's thinner. It's hard to tell from camera, but I've it's, heard that that's it's, true. It's, it's it's significantly thinner. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, why did you need like four millimeter stock on that? It was kind of stupid. But I would. they were supposed to do a sleesh sway back at some point. That's been like sort of like heralded for forever. This fabled sleesh sway back design. We'll see if we ever get that. But I don't mm. know. Techno 2 is kind of cool. Next one is the Brewer from a i think a dutch designer and it's just a little frame lock with a g10 scale kind of not exciting yeah it looks, it looks like an it looks like an anso kind of yeah. i mean yeah. I, I actually really like that i mean one. it's a good design it's not there's nothing there's nothing i dislike about it but am i gonna it's not it's definitely not shut up and take my money no, certainly territory. not it's it's got a gigantic fucking ricasso to make that troil so uh, it's all right. Um, I will say the best part of it is the maker's mark, which is like the face of a jack-o'-lantern, which is just, I, I mean, Halloween stuff, always up my alley. So I like his maker's mark, this guy, <laughs> Jerry Brewer. All right, that's about it <laughs> for that one. There's the Mantra 3, which is also not interesting. Uh, honestly, I'm... I want to. Is that no? That's not the one. Which one's the mantra? The mantra is that's the flipper. Yeah, it was is that the, the flipper. flipper? They were full tie. Okay. They had CPM M4. So the old ones, at least. Here's yes. So here's what I really appreciate about what they're doing with that, because they actually took a lot of the feedback from that first mantra. Oh yeah, thank God. And and totally went back to the drawing board with this knife, made it cheaper, uh, made it flip. We think um, change, we think it's gonna change flip. the blade steel. Uh, they uh, based on the mechanical yeah, this, changes they said they've made. I think that it will flip. Yeah, no, I was very excited about that. Um, that they you know fixed the ball bearing situation, which again was probably not the best move on their part. Like the the original thing with the paper thin steel washers that the bearings rode on so they increased the size of the bearings they increased the thickness of those washers i think it should be better and this one is a, a compression lock my only concern is that they're going to give it the fucking flaccid dick detent like they did on the ouroboros and oh not the ouroboros the sliver axe um because yeah. you mean our you mean our spaceship yeah the fucking special? spaceship that we rode into the sun on or i wish we rode into the fucking sun and died um but <laughs> that one I had one, and the detent was just like it was not really optimized Gar for anything. It was, it was straight. It needs some Viagra, some Levitra, or some shit. I mean, Viagra is generic now. It's not that cheap, Spiderco. Get some, give it to the knife, re-release it. I just yeah, I, I don't trust Spiderco to make a good flipper. So, but we'll see what happens because the next knife is also a flipper. <laughs> For detents lasting over four hours, see your physician. I want. I I need a. a uh, priapism. I want my detent to have a priapism. I want it to be rock hard for years. Anyway, you're gonna, you're gonna we, have to get what's the one? And mod it yourself. <laughs> yeah, Jake, you're gonna have to do that. It's gonna be a lot of drilling. All right, it's the best. That's, that's what they sh when they make a fixed blade uh, sliv racks. There you there go. We go. Yeah. Um, the next one is another compression lock clipper. The amalgam. Is it? Is that? Which one is that? It's, I'm not looking at anything. Why are you not looking I'm staring at, at the wall? I have no list. I, 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 I don't know where you're seeing this. I'm, remem I'm remembering. It's from I the fucking Google memory. Sheet, guys. What How Google do we sheet? get sponsors when this podcast is so trash? Well, send us I what you're looking at. I've so many at. times in the Hangout chat. I'll send... Where is that? This podcast is terrible. We're just canceling it. You know I don't know computers. <laughs> you really don't get computers putin, apparently. Mm, I don't understand. No. Yeah, I clicked. I clicked on that link. Are you talking about the episode fifteen? Yeah, and then it's got links. I clicked on the link and gives nothing. Okay, like all right. Nothing, well, I just I just use. set the knife news link. Click on that. You can see. Yeah. All the shit. Jesus Christ. This podcast. Sorry to our sponsors. We don't. We don't deserve you. Now, I I want you to drive here and see what I'm seeing right now because I tried it on my laptop and my iPad and I've got no. List. All right, I will describe this one. It is a three and a half inch Good. cutting edge compression lock flipper that also uses the fake carbon fiber or the carbon fiber G10 overlay. 
kind of stuff. Main time. Well, what's funny is I have I have the list now. <laughs> it's no wait. I don't have the list. It goes to like shot show. Oh wait, do I have the yeah. list? I have the I list. It's a picture of the knife. No, it's a picture of it's a it's a video on Knife Center a knife, or on yeah, because that's news. the only way you can do it because the only part nobody well, did video. Videos. No, everybody did videos. It's very annoying. There's like no. What am I gonna do it? What am I supposed to do with this, Dave? Just look at it. Just look at it. Would you just look at just, it? Just read the text look above at it. it. It, yeah, see, it, I'm there. But mine is only a video of the autonomy. Okay, well, that one also yeah. does not look very cool. We could skip that one. God. You're uh, gonna, I'm hoping you're editing this this part um, now. For the love. <laughs> Baby? <laughs> I love how it's Just from send the, us photos. <laughs> it's from the mind of Brian Lai. <laughs> Wait. I thought Brian Ty was yeah. dead. Is this his new alias? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's trying to be incognito. Uh, oh, it's Brian Lai. Yeah, the, Brian Lai is his evil doppelganger. <laughs> no, we must protect Brian Ty from his evil brother, Brian Lai. It's basically like in Star Trek, <laughs> Data and Lore. It's the same situation. Yeah. <laughs> it's just instead of wearing colorful Hawaiian shirts, they're like black and red. Uh, okay. Um, his life is moving kind of, on. Yeah, I guess we don't really need to talk about that one. And then I think the autonomy so, is the last spider go. No, no, no. There's the one, oh. which is the one designed by Kevin Smock. Oh, yes. That's the next one. The Smock design. It's just going to be called the Spider Coast Smock, which is a very unfortunate name. Doesn't really inspire a lot of, I don't know, gusto. <laughs> it's for when you're fingerprint painting in preschool. Yeah, it's like there's not a lot of enthusiasm when your knife is named Smock. I, oh I get that it's his last name, but like. So what's interesting about it is that uh, presumably you'll actually be supposed to get this knife at some point. <laughs> All right, we're going there. We have to go all there. Right. Listen, Kev, uh -huh. you know, I know you had some shit going on. Yes. We all had some shit going on. We all have our shit, but you got to get people the stuff that they pay for. Love you, brother. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what the deal is there. I didn't realize he had that many outstanding orders or anything, but... But congrats on the collaboration. Right, spider Co collaboration is no small feat. That's, a, that's actually a big deal. True, and then maybe I don't know what it's going to do for his customs because this is a pretty good facsimile of them. It's going to have to do something. I mean, it's it's a design uh, people uh, wanted, so I guess people are going to be pretty excited about this one. It's a compression lock flipper that uses a button with a button to, to activate the compre or to actuate the compression lock. Kind of like that sog that oh uh, yeah that Jake sent you. Only it was a the, liner, the fake sog. It was a fog. The the, the yeah, that thing is legendary. So that's where this design was stolen from, <laughs> but not really. I don't know. In the future, in the future, of course. Yeah. So that was in the Instagram comments. People wanted us to talk about that about, and it got four likes. So apparently, uh, people are aware of this, and I was not because I usually try and keep up on the shady shit going on in the knife industry. But all right, well, buy uh, buy the SK twenty three then if you want it. Isn't that what it's... Oh, that's the custom. That's what it's the called. The SK-23 is the custom, yeah. So I th yeah, yeah, probably yeah. should just went with that for the Spider-Co. It would, it would be a little bit sexier of a name. Yeah. They could have... I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. No. Um, is that all for Spider-Co? Yeah, uh, no. No, wait. Those fixed blades. We talked about those in yes. the... No. In the, the oh, we they know. sounded very excited about those fixed blades. The, the new Recenti, uh, Paisan. Oh, yeah. The, the new it's a dumb integral. name. Hey, Paisan means like friend in Italian. I know what oh, okay. it means. It's still a dumbass fucking name. All right. I mean, it's, yeah, I don't love it. For a Canadian knife maker. He, yeah. I don't, is Peter Rosenti Italian? I, don't, I have no idea. Oh, I guess Rosenti is a pretty Italian last yeah, name. Yeah. Anyway, it's not like, it's not my favorite name. But anyway, it's a cool knife and it seems like it has some. It's better than Smock. <laughs> Yes, it's a much it's a much better knife name than just calling it smock. And concierge. And con There's a is that the theme of 2018's shot show is bad names? We're running out of shot show 2018. We're running out of ideas. I mean, yes, that could be the knife industry as a whole. Especially you want to talk about yeah. running out of ideas. TKI is right now. Uh, the tactical oh, yeah. knife invitational. I've never seen more like uninspired just Timascus bolsters and Westinghouse, like Westinghouse with Timascus bolsters, bolsters and Damascus. That's every knife. Everybody had the same idea. It's the idea. same thing. There's, like, nothing left to do. There's no materials, like, left, or at least people haven't come up with creative ways to use them or something, but it's the same same shit. 
Like same. Well, don't worry. The, that that Westinghouse can't last forever. Yeah, I guess that's a good thing until people start like aging, like artisanally aging their micarta. Yes. <laughs> to sell the <laughs> knife makers. There, that, that's, a good, that's that's our that's new niche idea for, for a, a third party service to the knife oh, industry. Yeah. We'll age your micarta. Yeah, we'll age. Yeah. <laughs> micarta aging services. Yeah, I mean TKI yeah. was like. I was like, all right, yeah. I mean, these are nice. I know I'll never be able to afford them, but at this point, I don't. I don't really like. Do I really want this that badly? It's just the same thing over and over. It's, everyone did the same mm-hmm. same combination of materials. Yes. Yeah. So um, it was funny. I was actually talking to Elijah Isham, and his favorite production knife that he had, obviously. Uh, well, we're going to go into like the with Kaiser and uh, and we, but he was actually at the CRKT booth. And he was really impressed with the uh, with the Richards Rogers uh, uh, the, design. The Quattro one. and the Maven, they look nice. Yes, they look nice for CRKT. The Quattro, he he said it flips really good. I mean, CRKT so, has always done flippers pretty decently, though. I disagree. Oh, really? Like every ball bearing flipper, like maybe once in a blue moon. I think like the one that looked like a turd was the Coma Fossil. Like literally looked like like an actual. Oh no, that was the Ken Onion one. Piece of the Ken shit. Onion one's the one that looked like the actual piece of shit. No, it was the fo- a coma fossil. The the fossil, I mean, it looked like shit, but it didn't look like a piece of shit. That well, maybe it no, was no, the it just it, the the piece of scale that was on it was brown and had oh, a consistency. I thought you were talking. Yes, I think that's what I think that's what. Oh yeah, referring. yeah, no, it does. Yeah, they, they have other is, like sort of like fecal looking knives. This is not the first one. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna have to find out the Ken Onion shit knife. That's just that's just what they lube their pivots with. Yikes. I, I I had a uh, years ago when the Ripple first came out um, in one of the versions. I don't remember which which it was. Um, that knife that was one of those knives that I talk about being able to gift a flipper. It's got to flip really well. So I did have to modify that before I could give it to my mom, who uh, say, really get- really liked that knife. It was the first time she ever liked a knife in her entire life. I was like, okay, give me a day, and I'll then it'll be yours. I, and she carries it every day since. It's just it's in her purse. I've, I haven't seen it in like five years. But all right, <laughs> I just sent the knife in the chat. Is that not also a piece of shit? That's the Ken Onion wrinkle for our listeners' reference. It is also a shit I mean, knife. Hmm. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. I've. I mean, CRKT just seems to be preoccupied with like scat scatological humor. I like. <laughs> scatological. Lil Wayne Wait is minute. in charge of their company. You can't, you can't throw- you can throw out a word that's never been used before and then just blow right past it. Scatological yeah. humor. Yeah, like Lil Wayne has like a million lyrics that involve shit jokes. And it's... Never mind. Wrong I'm audience. the scat okay. man. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll agree. That does look like it would, it, it would really push does. the thing yeah. out. I mean, how, how do you come out with that and say... I mean, I could imagine like Ken Onion to be like, "Watch this." He's sitting there with his buddies. He's high yeah, he's as like, fuck. I, I bet he's like, these, "Watch this." I bet these fuckers in CRKT are going to release. Yeah, this who chose Brown? Thing. Like, I mean, come on. It was so obvious. Oh my god, that you're right. That's the worst thing I've ever it's, seen it's, in my life. It's not good. Nothing about it is good. So, I almost, I almost want it just to say, like, just to remind me of what a knife could be. <laughs> that things can always get worse. Brian, do you see this thing, man? Yes. <laughs> what are your thoughts? It, it looks like poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. For once, we, we all four of us just agreed on yeah, something. That's rare. Yeah. I'm, actually trying to find, I'm actually trying to find somebody else's knife right now that looks even more like poo. <laughs> I got to find it. You'll see it in a Yikes. second. Let me just get to it. I mean, we can move on to Kaiser now. They're up. Yeah, let's, t- let's talk about Kaiser. And I got to. Uh, and. I have to say, the Zeta isn't that no, the that's one the that's uh, it's, it's confusing. The- Fuck! I thought I I tried so hard to get this right. I had a 50-50 It's the chance. Theta. It's the Theta. All right. I think that's a must. Yeah, have. it looks awesome. So Kaiser really dropped yeah. the ball in their catalog, where they had like zero new knives and a billion fucking mm-hmm. useless trinkets. Um, but then they came to Shot Show and actually unveiled a bunch they of cool had- knives. They had so many trinkets oh that, that Blade HQ had to do a separate. We're going to spend show. a good hour in this episode right now just talking about. We got to go through every trinket individually. We have to. We have to talk about. There's the trinkets. so many fucking trinkets. Like it's 2015 all over again. But we'll send you something if you count how many times we say the word trinket. I, there's in this no other episode. way to describe. It. I'm trying to think of something more insulting to describe it. Like bobble. Bo- bobble. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> something that yes. has no purpose whatsoever or is yes, useless. It's a bobble. <laughs> There's fucking bobble and trinkets <laughs> LLC over here. Yeah, the the, the baseball bat. The baseball bat, bat is so which, bad. And the worst it, part is like now the West Tennessee knife makers of Tennessee fanboys are going to freak out because, yeah, Jay, uh, Brad Blunt did definitely make a baseball bat first. I love it's the the th the thought pattern to me is what's best about about them making a baseball bat. What do American yes. like? Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to say that they profiled us, but I feel like they profiled us a little bit. Yes, just definitely profiling going on. I'm offended. That's that, racist. That it is, is actually it is, racist. Yeah. It is racist. Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, and I have Wait to for say, the apple like, pie. I mean, uh, follow up. It's just going to be a million yeah, right. piece of apple pie. <laughs> And, and then the, ne the next one is going to be a little fat guy. <laughs> and that is also already Oh, God, already the fucking fat done. man talisman. Yes, I thought we were past that. Okay, okay well, that we're not talking about that. But going on to the, just getting these, these trinkets and baubles yeah. out of the way. I feel like they're trolling us a little bit by offering us hand-ground titanium chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that oh, means they have to no. have a sense of humor about this whole thing. Shh. Shout out to Zach. It was it was Zach, right? Blade HQ. Yeah. Zach doing yeah, the Zach. interview. Okay, so he found, I mean, he found a way to stay cordial and excited, and offer something positive to say about every little every single item. one of those the, things. The chopsticks. He was like, you know what? The texture on these chopsticks. I'm not that great with chopsticks, and sometimes my noodles slip out. And the texture <laughs> on these chopsticks, I feel like. And I'm paraphrasing here, so uh, a quote unquote and allegedly in there, but I, I feel like I could hold on to my noodles with these chopsticks oh or something to that effect. He did a great uh, job. He did great, a great, great job. job. I only cringed a few <laughs> times with it. You, know, you just oh move on God. at that point. Just be like, all right, nice chopsticks. Uh, I have <laughs> nice to tell you, though, I love that guy that works for Kaiser. He David? is a, he is fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. The other David, yeah, I know. Yeah, that dude I was pissed that his name was great. David because we already have a, a David yeah. dang it at. Um, well, because you just arbitrarily uh, choose like uh, a pale face name. Choose a right? Western name. Like that's really what it is. So, but yes. but uh, when there's four big Chinese companies and everybody's name that, that are selling to this this one little industry, we need different names for each of them. Dave, we can't Dave, have two Dave. We, can't have we have two a Joe at We Knives, so. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, but uh, so it's Dave, it was, Dave, Joe, and Richard. There we go. Wow. I love. Either way, and, uh, great. Uh, he he knows about his products. He, he he's genuinely into it uh, because he was carrying uh, a gray pocket yeah. brute, one of the uh, which that I thought was a highlight. Was, yes, yeah, I, mean, I think that really was very excited cool. about not just that knife, but about about John's uh, design and and his theories. And he talked about um, you know dealing with John during the collaboration and and uh, learning about the the nickel the, trick or the coin and trick the pivot and, yeah uh, that was yeah. really Can cool we, yeah he seemed to really like he really appreciated it I, I mean uh, other possible digs at america they have a pig trinket it's a fat pig yes yes <laughs> yes i saw that which is it's a bottle fat opener capitalist pigs and yes, it's also i true. love the baseball bat they have like the bio of the guy who designed it and he's an electrician and none of the things about him have anything to do with why he designed a little baseball bat <laughs> So I love how they designed the baseball bat, and they were like, we can't just sell a fucking titanium baseball bat, guys. Uh, put a glass breaker on the end of it. <laughs> how big is it? Um, it is 4.41 uh, inches. Three inches, maybe? I'm, like, I'm looking inches. at the catalog. Four and a half yeah. inches. <laughs> Two ounces okay. of titanium. You're going to have to Cadillac. Brian, think about it this way. You should be manufacturing trinkets. you got to get into the trinket game. <laughs> I just can't get myself it's really to worth do it. Oh, my God. The most... I, Brian, you need to come out with a set of chopsticks. <laughs> oh, the irony. Talk the about irony. Iconic. Oh, yeah. my God. Ironic. <laughs> yeah. Iconic, yeah. iconic and ironic. He would set the new standard. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah, they also... Well, no, you could do them on... I mean, you could do them on a mill, but... Uh... They go there and they hand finish every set of chopsticks. So that means they're just... That means they're just... That's because it's cheaper to fucking... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> See, I can I can go a little bit down the road, and then and then Brian just rockets down the boulevard. <laughs> what did I say that was a lie? Uh, it's only one guy doing it. I like the toothpick. 
Getting back on time. It may be, it, let's be honest, it might be one 10-year-old. Oh, God. Yeah, whatever. The, they had some nice knives, though. Uh, oh, they were very That nice. was my, no, the toothpick was my cringe moment because I just pictured, like, just taking a huge chip out of one of yeah, my teeth. I don't think a titanium toothpick is a good idea. I just tried to use a titanium toothpick. I've got a... That seems very dangerous. How how much how much how much is the titanium? We have no toothpick? prices on any of this yet. Does it cost? Like, is it going to cost money? Like, is that something that they're <laughs> expecting people to, like hand over dollar bills for? Yes. Because it comes in a water tight container that you can put your drugs I, in. I honestly don't know where they're going with with the toothpick. It, maybe that's what it. Maybe that's just what it. It's like a little bowl accessory. Um, yeah, I mean that's you know what, what I mean. I mean to be honest with you, I kind of would get it for that. Yeah, I mean, they, I, it seems more useful to that than breaking all your fucking teeth. You know, you can keep your weed in there <laughs> and break your teeth. And break your teeth with it. Oh God. That sounded suspiciously. Yeah, like that Brian. was your, just your Brian impression. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> no, you know, now you guys got me worried about what I said before. So cut this and put this in. Just, yeah. you know. <laughs> See, labor is cheaper than machinery in China. <laughs> okay. All right. Cut that. Out <laughs> wow. Right. Yeah, there's a. Uh, you know what they need to do is maybe trim down all their models from Matt Cucciara. I think I counted. They have like 28 or 29 different Matt Cucciara models. That's, that's too you many. Know, that's he lot. might have more production lives than any single designer out there right now. Which it might be the only way that he's making money right now, to be honest I mean, with that you. makes sense. He did he had some medical issues that came up. But, yeah. yeah. Let me tell you. Unless, I mean, unless you're selling thousands of these, for the money to really be there, you have to have multiple designs. That's right. And I people. think that's really Really, there is no money yeah. there. <laughs> it's not worth how, it. Really. How do you know, Brian? <laughs> Well, I'll be finding out shortly, hopefully. But I'm telling you, like the money that you, the, the, if you go, eh, I'm like we talked about this before. I'm not even. Yeah. Gonna the zip <laughs> slip is cool though. The slip joint from Michael Vagney. Yeah. People like that one. I, I mean, good I, one. I like you know, I, I liked everything that that Kaiser put the, out. The zip slip, the zip slip, fixes. My God, that's a lot. Uh, what <laughs> I want to love certain slip joints in my uh, collection, but. Something about that one-handed open, it's like, it, it's a rare, at least the way I use knives, it's kind of rare that I have both hands available when I go to grab a knife. So <clears throat> that one looks, that one looks really good. I, I, I like that idea. Yeah. But uh, yeah. one thing I, I will say, I like when they were like, new for 2018, we used a carbon fiber inlay in the Nick Swan knife, the Matan, Ma, Matanzas, instead of Micarta. Yo, motherfucker, when did it come out in 2017? It never came out. <laughs> I was going to say, I've never seen <laughs> that, that knife. It looks awesome. It didn't come out. But I've never it seen it It was originally before. supposed to have Micarta, yeah. and then it would carbon fiber. But you can't be like, oh, yeah, well, when we released it in 2017, it originally had Micarta. It wasn't released. No one got one. <laughs> like, it didn't. Wait, wait well, which, which one was Nick this? Swan I honestly kind of wanted this. It's, it's like a. It's very pretty thin, gorgeous. It has this huge, uh, like, interframe inlay of carbon fiber. They're very nice. And it's a Nick Swan. Yep. It's a Kaiser. Yep. A Kizzer. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it just, it didn't come out, but speaking of didn't come out, that's actually a good transition to steel will. And the fact that the ant lock was still not there. Hmm. Mm. But I think, I think what they found out was that, you know, the cut Jack was basically, you know, sell all they needed to put out. So they just put out everything else that looks like a cut. Yeah. I mean, that was probably one of the best knives of 2018 from, you know, just general opinion. From the whole community. I've never handled I, I one. Haven't I'm either, sure they're good. I can trust the amount of people that have said they're good to believe that it is good. There's yes. there's tons of them. They came out with that new one, the Intrigue, which is basically just the cut jack if you just smushed it a little bit. And it, it looks nice. And apparently the Ant Lock, they're going to make an announcement in February about when it will be released. So it's going to continue to be vaporware for a long time. I'm going to tell you that I just don't care. I like the designs. They were so cool. Like, you're the only I'm, one. You know, I'm a, I'm a. But do we know anything? Ant lock truther. Do we know anything about that company? Do we know who? It's like American. Who, who are they're, they? They're an American company. Their stuff is made by other people, though. They they don't manufacture. Well, they they had so, some, okay. All well, right. they had some Eastern European chick, uh, you know, slinging their stuff over. At, Did they? Uh, yo, yes. I thought I thought they're oh, based. Yes. Out of, maybe they're not based out of America. Oh no, it's an American. Mm. We specialize in the production of pneumatic guns under our brand Gletcher. 
Okay. Uh, so Steel Will is someone else's brand, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So this is this is one of those things where as more and more really, really high quality, interesting knives are coming out uh, and I sort of have to keep pairing back. It's like when I have to go unfollow people on Instagram because my feed just gets too long. Like at what there's a point where you have to start cutting out certain categories. And I don't know, these like mysterious origin companies are starting to become they're they're nearing my you, cut want, you want to talk about mysterious origin say. companies this chinese company just appeared at shot show called artisan cutlery uh their website's artisancutlery.net which is basically the vaguest name like most generic name you could possibly have just coming out of nowhere with these incredibly like fully featured titanium frame locks no one's ever heard of them where who who are they no answers they just mm. appeared at shot show like a fucking pokemon mm. Apparently, when you when you wade through the tall grass at Shot Show, you just encounter random knife companies. Yeah, that's really what it is. You have to go on a knife company safari yeah. every time you go to Shot it's, Show. It's, it's they. I mean, these knives look very attractive. I'll set the leg, but like, you want to talk about unproven? Like, how do you get a booth at Shot Show when no one's ever heard of you? I guess that's a good time to do you it. Pay, you pay. You all pay you money. do is pay fucking True, money. But like, where's the capital coming from? Uh, some I mean, other big no, Chinese because it makes probably. Because some other company, yeah. yeah, it's like a shell company or something yeah. like that. Who knows? Uh, uh, can we talk about tops? Yes, I, ha I have the, sure. I have the knives, the knives from Tops linked, as well. Um, there's only really one that yeah, we the folder. Talk about. The folder. So there's two. Yeah, well, there's there's two, but the one is already. I mean, we already know about the one of them. the The other one is made by um, Mazarin knives. Really, like the, the so, Italian company? Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So that's why we're actually going to see that knife go to production. Oh yeah. But aside from the other thing where they paid six hundred dollars for that, for that liner, uh, Bob knife. Did that ever come out, or was it just that like pre-production that was like five hundred bucks? It was just that pre-production that was <laughs> five hundred. Comes out. Yeah. That, I mean, that little they 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 said it, it's coming. They, yeah, then he, he said it is unquestionably, definitely. The little coming. folding Scandi mm -hmm. looks nice. I mean, the Scandi grind is literally useless except for on wood. I like it. I yeah, like it. it. Like it's it's useless except for if you're cutting wood. Like it's uh, terrible yeah. for every other sort of everyday carry use. Yes, I I felt like the, the their representative was uh, I, I I don't know. He seemed confused. Like oh, <laughs> when when he when he took I out the bushcraft bushcraft I, knife, he. He felt he felt visibly guilty to me. You know what I mean? He was like, "Here it is. It's the whoa! Oh my god! I can't believe it. All right, here it is. It's gonna come out. Sorry, sorry about this one. Mm -hmm. you paid five seven thousand dollars for this one. Sorry. In guys. terms of the worst presenters, that guy might be up there, but certainly uh, the Boker executive who got a bunch of like factual details uh, I, wrong. I had to sh I had to shut that off midway and then, through. I couldn't. Honorable mention to the K bar guy Joe, who was clearly super hungover when played HQ was interviewing him. Yeah. How about Lion Steel? <laughs> I refuse to watch Lion Steel. It was very bad. Could not listen. He he was just every every Italian guy that I that I interacted with was exactly like that. I don't know if they really are all uh, it just sort of permanently their noses turned up or something like that but yeah he was definitely acting like his shit you know what it stink. does stink because yeah. their only model was the fucking shrunken version of the sr 11 sr 22 like wow the sr 22 Which, i've got to tell you i think that's an ugly fucking knife. i mean it, it's lion steel it's what like nicely machined and nothing else sure i mean it's, it's i'm it's sure some people like it but here's my hot take I, I just i think it's ugly yeah i mean mm. i'm sick of it it's like a 12 year old design it's not 12 years old, but, like, it may as well be at this point. It's old. This shit's old. Make a new design. Goddamn. Maybe make one that isn't, like, a wedge, and it isn't, like, half an inch behind the edge. Like, I... Oh, God. I'm still upset at Lion Steel. I was, I was hoping we would ignore them, but it came up. <laughs> that's all they showed, though. It's like, true. What do you fucking do? Um, here's another interesting thing. If we're going with... If we're doing quick hits on all these random brands... Hogue is going to be making an Axis Lock knife. Yes, but they didn't call it an Axis yeah, Lock. It's an and they were very coy to even mention the fact that, that Benchmade had the HK license Oh, yeah, that prior. whole thing like, is very interesting. It was so awkward to listen yeah, to. Yeah, seriously. It's like, yeah, other, you know, other manufacturers have had 
the this brand and this in the past and uh, blah blah blah. It's like shut up. Just say Benchmade had it. Now they don't. <laughs> what I don't. You, I mean, they just it. HK just got like dropped like a bad habit out of nowhere. Uh, do you remember mm. when they like just are like, "Yep, we're no longer working with HK." I have a feeling that there's some legal stuff there where they they were approached by Hogue because um, if the contract with HK and Benchmade was terminated, um, you know, before you know any before the contract had expired, that means HK still had the rights to use the access lock to a certain yeah. extent. So then they approached well, the access lock uh, patents over. Oh, it's there expired. you go. Then. It expires in 2018, so now pretty much anyone can do the access lock if they want. 20 wow. years. Don't do it, guys. Oh, Ali- AliExpress don't do it. on blow. I mean, they were already uh, using it illicitly, yeah. so like it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, but now it's like you can get the Shirogor of like 111 clones that use the access lock. No what thing. don't you like about that? It's it's not pleasurable. The access lock? No, I don't. Doesn't... I do not enjoy it either. It does not have a lot of it's enjoyment, not, like, mechanically. Yeah. And I think it makes the knife look aesthetic. It, it makes you make a really thick knife, and usually they're ugly. Yeah, you, it's just not, it's not aesthetically You have to do, pleasing. like, weird things with, generally with, like, the stop pin placement, I feel like. Um, and it seems to always create bad blade-to-handle ratios. I don't know if it's inherent to the design itself. I think there are some ones with good ones, or maybe it's just Benchmade's designs favor a longer handle. But, uh... Yeah, you, I, I don't... I, I'm not excited to see a proliferation of Axis lock knives, unless someone can really somehow do something better. Well, you're they, the one who's excited about ant locks, and you're I the know. one buying new bench I'm only, excited, in 2018. I'm only excited about the ant locks. You're the, 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 the knife looks cool. Not because of the lock. Right. My, my complaint is that the Omega Spring is a very, very dainty little thing, uh, doing a very, very important job. Yeah. And... I, I would I would say okay I I would say fine maybe I'm wrong except we have seen a million of them break so what if they switch to like what they did with it, the anthem it's ready for an update like with the anthem where it uses like a or, coil spring yeah or, or like all the the Spyderco models that use a similar style where it's it's just a regular coil spring um, in like the bolt is it the bolt action and then there's the ball bearing lock like they're all very stout my god my wife couldn't barely even manipulate her her uh, pink man x2 yeah, when i X2 is a- uh, i got that for a few years ago it's it's a very stout yeah, that's spring. definitely a knife that does uh, not then, need viagra you know, that's the man x2 pull yeah pull, polar opposite of the if, if you've ever taken one of those apart you look at the omega spring it makes you turn your head like a dog like are they sure that that that's the kind of spring they want to yeah. use it it's very dainty yeah but I still like a lot of their products. True. Just don't need a lot of access lock, locks in my All life. All right, here is... In my, in my life. Did I say knife or life? Same thing at this point. I think I'm falling apart over here. I'm done. Okay, here's an interesting thing. Case is having Southern Grind make them a ball-bearing flipper. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. I uh, that's an interesting collaboration. Case is trying to make a modern knife because I think they've kind of stayed out of that. I I just, I mean, it's a very strange <laughs> yep. thing to even. It's conceive. a ball bearing frame lock with S thirty five VN made by Southern Grind with the little chode clip, and one of the most interesting innovations i use that word with a question mark at the end it comes with something to put on the other side of the knife like in place of the pocket clip it's basically like a little stepped ramp so that you can use it's like a place to put your thumb to get traction to pull the knife out of your pocket this is one of these things that'll make a lot more sense when i show a picture of it um and you guys will be able to Mm -hmm. see it in the show notes but i'll send it in the chat right now i have never seen this before and i don't really know how to feel about it it's like a bolt-on grip enhancer but yeah, that's a thing. So case is a. I have to tell you, like the overall design is kind of nice. Yeah, it's it's cool. It um it, it looks like a Rexford uh, eight hundred eight. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. The, the handle certainly looks like that. The blade looks like the Kershaw Link, kind of all around. I mean, it's it's cool. It's. I'm curious. I'm curious. I mean, uh, the Southern Grind stuff, like it. Never really appealed to me, but it's n- they're not bad. No, I, I like the company. I had one of those bad monkeys way back in the day. Uh, that was the first video I ever watched from Austin at Snuggle Bunny was his 
Southern Grind review. But uh, that's because you're just a huge Zach Brown. Oh man, fan. I love Zach Brown band. Let's let's just listen to Chicken Fried right now. Why don't we just make that our theme song? I just love that song so much. Speaking of theme song, oh, yeah, we kind of have one. You know, maybe. do we, we have one? Yes. He is finishing so not it this up episode. now, so you won't hear it this episode. So that was kind of a huge letdown. Well, we can we can use we can use the the. Uh, it's kind of cool because it'll look like we've we've made yeah, some it'll, pro- it'll progress. It'll look like the it. podcast really evolved in 2018, That's... except for the, when they get to the part where no one could figure out how to look at the fucking knives on the website. <laughs> that whole part <laughs> of the podcast. <laughs> oh man, so th- that was, that was the whole podcast, but. Our, since our theme is is moving forward and and accepting sponsorships and other types <laughs> of professional things, we have an awesome theme song. We do. Yes, yes, we do. I, I will say, the source is awesome. The fact that we have it is awesome. Are we allowed to say who where it came from? Yeah, sure. My buddy, no, uh, hold on, Josh. You're not you're not, has... you're not saying this. Out. You're not you're not selling this from post metal legends, a genre with so five bands. Me, so so let me before you even say that. He's not in. He's vaguely affiliated with. He he did all the tour. He when they go on tour, he's he a touring and that. session musician. He's just yeah. as important as everyone else. He is. I mean, and he's been part of. He's like part of that band. To begin with, somewhat so. affiliated when, uh, with. Okay, somewhat affiliated with post metal band Rosetta. Yes. Okay, but either way. Uh, it's funny because I actually was talking to the guys in Rosetta uh, before, because uh, I talked to Josh a little while ago, saying, "Hey, look, if you got some time, uh, if you have anything laying around, you know, I have this little podcast thing, and we kind of need like a uh, a theme song." And he's like, "Oh yeah, I'll I'll get back to you. Let me see what I let me see what I can do." So a couple of weeks pass. I'm not even thinking about it. And what's funny is um, the drummer from Rosetta actually makes my coffee in the morning at Starbucks. <laughs> That shows you how well. Um, and I talk to him plays, frequently. Unfortunately, yeah, seriously, it, if that's how big Post Metal. Very well known band in in that genre too. I think pretty much the the inventor of that genre of metal. But besides the point, I don't want to argue um, specifics there. But ISIS was around before. ISIS was around before. Neurosis. That's true. But they're they're one yeah. of the I mean, one of the leading acts. I th- I think they were one of the earliest. Eh, I yes. I, I mean, they would cite ISIS and Neurosis yeah. as. as as being the forefathers of it, but I would say they're one of the, the most influential. Yeah. Um, either way, I was talking to him and said, what if we wanted to use Rosetta music for our, uh, for our podcast? He's like, Oh yeah, dude, go ahead. As long as it's part of like these, uh, these albums, then, then you guys can use whatever you want. Cause you just need our permission. Otherwise you have to get the label. Uh, but as I did that, Josh, wrote us a custom song. So I was like, great, that's even better. So that was all within. So if we didn't have Josh write us an awesome little stoner metal thing for our intro, it was probably going to be really Yeah, I mean, I don't, does, since we're not making a profit off of this, doesn't it fall under fair use? Like, do we not have to get the label's permission? I don't know how that shit works, but. Well, because what if we start making <laughs> a profit off of this? <laughs> what, if, what if we sell out in 2018 like we already announced that's we're doing? Point. Yeah, we Boom. already announced we have a sponsor. We probably should have the right uh, yes. situation. Anyway, we have the rights to this song, so don't go deleting our podcast from yes. the internet. Please, Apple, mm-hmm. do not delete it, and or FCC or whoever controls their <laughs> shit. I guess we should pay him something, huh? You can get him a knife. You want to make it a legit? Knife? Yeah, maybe a t-shirt. Yeah. Oh, you, you know what we should definitely talk about because it, you posted a picture. We should probably talk about Hinder. Oh <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. a legendary. <laughs> Legendary revolution. So the only reason, first off, I like Rick Hinder. I don't have a problem yeah. with Rick Hinder, right? We, and Jake and I, we know we had a great conversation with him over at, at, at Nick's. It was a good dude. Um, I even like his knives. But when you post up like a teaser photo that looks like, you know, you're um, changing something? Apocalypse Now, <laughs> where you're, 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 you're coming out with like some sort of change to like your best-selling model, like the iconic XM18. We're, we're waiting with bated breath as to what you're going to do. And he's just like, yeah, it's got a lock bar insert. Now. Womp, womp, womp. Yeah, I mean, great. Yeah, good. It's like, you know, it's fine. I'm sure it's good. No problem. Just really, that's that that that's what 
that's what constitutes generation five. Yeah, the sheep foot blade is actually more exciting to me than the than the lock bar insert. Sure. Yeah, the sheep's foot blade. Although I can it's, say, it most well. people are like, "Why are they doing the lock bar insert? They never have lock problems." I can proudly say I had a hinderer that had lock slip, because mm. every single knife I touch hmm. turns turns to rot. Oh god, I almost just I almost yeah. just quoted a cataclysm this, song. Yeah. Mm. I almost just quoted "Turns to Rust" <laughs> by Cataclysm, oh, featuring the lead singer of Kitty. Wow! Yeah, also in the arms of devastation. That's a wait. What? Cool. When was the lead singer of Kitty in no, Cataclysm? No, she was featured on the track. Oh, she I, was featured I, on the track. Was she dating the guy or I, something? Uh, Mauricio. You know, you know, he just like owns Duh. a pizza shop in Canada. That's what he does when he's not touring. It's, it's because his name yeah, is Mauricio. Super Italian. Yeah. Um, I saw them. <laughs> Maybe he's friends with Peter Resenti. I mean, Italian Canadians. Like the entire Italian Italian Canadians. The I saw them two. live, and I don't remember why I did. I think it was them in Flesh God Apocalypse. And at the end of the show, because it was such a little show, he just stepped off the stage into the audience and talked to people. Well, <laughs> you want to talk about no theater at all? He just walked off the stage it, into the crowd. It was like, hey, guys. It, Cataclysm is probably one of the most mediocre bands. Cataclysm is hot take. Hot it's take. It's not hot take at all. Double, yeah. triple, hot, triple hot take. Uh, Claudio of Coheed and Cambria fan did the exact same thing the first time I saw them, and it was me he was talking to. Okay, that's to. pretty awesome. Yeah, Cataclysm is an extremely middle-of-the-road metal band. Like, really yes. not interesting, unfortunately. They spell Cataclysm they with do. a K, by the way. They have, yeah. <laughs> I think I was there for Flesh God Apocalypse, but anyway. Um, but yeah, knives. But knives. Uh, yeah, the Gen 5 hinder is not, not really... They put some interesting milling on the I like 10. it. I think it looks cooler. Go. It's like got like a quilted and so, pattern. It does. It gives it a little more of a to, some personality. And the 30th anniversary ones are that turned out okay. It, it turned out okay. That's as, yeah. as for something that is kind of corny, it turned out all right. And that's about the best it could have turned out, I think. It was it was it was a corny thing to do, but it probably turned out better than Kershaw's last anniversary knife, the Ruby, which was like such a polarizing knife. I don't I don't know if any you had a Ruby. Do you still have the ruby, or did you sell the ruby? I mm. have the ru I have the ruby. Dead air. You <laughs> I do, have the you ruby. Still, yeah, yeah. You, it's, you still it's cool. have that, did, Dave? Did you handle? I have one? no. I've never. I still have it. No, I still have it. Nobody wants to buy it. I mean, it's cool. It's like ZDP one eighty nine. It's all DLC. I'd probably buy it for mm -hmm. an unfair price, like <laughs> three hundred bucks. Mm, is it worth three hundred dollars in your opinion? How is it? Is it like how is it functional as a knife? It's it's very, oh, it's very, very amazing. good. It, I'm not it, selling. I'm not really selling it for 300 bucks. I, but it's uh, thing. it's Kershaw branded, but it, it, it functions like a limited ZT. I think in every in every way. It was a cool looking knife. Be, I mean, if it didn't have all the sort of gaudy ish bits or the things that people found gaudy. The, the pack, the presentation, the packaging is so over the top. It, it's worth buying yeah. just for that. Is it the the new Wii knives, the Elijah Huge. Isham one, the the Eschaton? That packaging is pretty ridiculous as well. It's is nice. it? Hopefully, I'll be finding out soon. That that knife changed my entire attitude about that style of knife design. I was just not into it until uh, until Elijah fixed it in my brain or something. I don't know. I'm into yeah. it. I mean that pa the packaging first off is the exact same packaging that I got the Dama Steel six hundred four yeah. in. Um, two, yeah, I won an Escaton. I, I, yeah. I mean, I was surprised that we didn't show anything new. But like, why do you need to when you come out with a new knife every two weeks? Yeah, dude, they're showing it's it's night morning yeah, design. Seriously. I mean, I like that. I think I like that better. Just like you know, come out with a knife when when you're done with it. Don't like wait for a show to have a big reveal. I kind of like this. Like, although new knife. although it kind of does ruin the mystique oh, yeah, because I mean. Like, there's, I mean, how many Wii knives do we not give a shit about right now? 99% of them, unfortunately. Yeah. Like, the, the new Zephyr, I kind of like. I like, well, that, that the, which the Zephyr is the kind of bulbous, rounded one with the CF inlays. It's, it's selling for 295, not 250, like, um, like the normal Wii knives are. Yeah, and then there's the Zeta. The Zeta is going to be cool, but it's not coming for a while, unfortunately. April yeah, or something? Yeah, April. Womp womp, but. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's not like we don't have knives right? to, it's not, to look it's, at right now yeah. and then. True. It seems like April's going to be a costly month, though, with ZT coming out, too. Yes, that's should we, true. Should we dive into some of these questions? I think that was... Is anyone... Was Pretty much... It for SHOT Show? 
Uh, uh, can we talk about brown oh, blades? Oh, fuck, yeah! Yeah. China everything. <laughs> Just chi China everything. All China everything. Throw some China okay, on that bitch. So, so... China. I don't. Yeah. I don't really know <laughs> how to really explain because that was the cringiest interview I've ever seen. Well, in my the man life. is the is is just walking cringe, unfortunately. Mm, I mean, so basically, he's taking all his models, and throwing some China on that bitch, and and just dipping them China. in China. Yeah. They're... So basically. As if you could take a brass blades and make it any more China than it already Imagine is. Imagine taking a brass blades sandwich at... Did I even say that? There's too much alliteration here. It's throwing me off. Yeah. Brass blades sandwich and just rub some Chinese aioli all over it. And that's what you have now. Mm -hmm. it is... Eat it with titanium chopsticks. <laughs> it is that so China. It's awesome. So it's basically just every single model is already made just with plastic handles. And, yes. excuse me, China and... D2. <laughs> China D2. China D2. I'll it's... give you that. It's like our. I was going to play devil's but advocate. Different. I was going to play devil's advocate and say that I didn't find it as cringy as you guys did. But the China D two thing, I would like more I would information. Love about more information that. about China D two. And I like how Jake, you were trying to defend him as if he was using like CPM D two. Oh, yeah, that was great. Like, like well, I said, no. What? Like, are you kidding me? I, I'll repeat this as many times as you would love to hear it. I'm sure. We need people to start putting the CPM in front of D2, if that's what they're using. But is but anyone using it? There's a big difference. No yeah, one's using it. Yeah. No, someone's using it. was discontinued. No, the only person I know who uses CPM D2 is Lee Lerman. And probably because he bought it a long time ago, and he makes one or two knives a month. I've used it in the mm. past. It's it's great. It's good yeah, stuff. Yeah, uh, CPM D2 is good. See, yeah. Now, I my theory is that the resurgence of people sticking up for D2 has something to do with the fact that there is a powder metallurgy version of D2, which is obviously going to be superior. Uh, that uh, that just that to me that seemed like it had to be. What does the P stand for in CPM, Jake? Pussy. Crucible. Powder. Yeah. Yeah. Metallurgy, yeah. yeah, and the and old D two was not powder metallurgy. It's not D old D. It's two separate things. Not I'm, everyone, I'm, er, nobody is using CPM D two. Yeah, I thought they discontinued it, but no, now people if are they're using, okay, using okay, Spiderco. Uh, I'm going to go down the list for you. Spiderco did a military yeah, sprint tense. run in uh -huh. CPM D two. Uh, okay, that was kind of a while was, ago. I'm I'm just googling this to we try. We just need and to ask Niagara Special Met uh, Specialty Metals like whether they're still making CPMD2 or not. They probably don't make. Yeah, exactly. I don't think they're even making it anymore. Like because th there's a bunch of people who have said it's discontinued, and there's a there is a there is a well, thread they, they, on Blade forums about exactly about it being this. discontinued. Well, it's it's discontinued because CTS XHP is basically powdered but, D2. Yeah. They're just going to keep doing, like, every industry, yeah. and, like, the whole knife deal is keep giving you something new, because everybody's got to have that new hot thing mm -hmm. until it's cool to have the retro shit. Which, sure, that, and that's fine. My point was just that if, if someone's using the old D2, okay, call it D2, if you're using CPM D2 or some other newer variant of it, we need, we definitely need people to start using those letters i thought that more people were using the newer version nah, i think plenty of people are just using the regular old tool steel they're just using regular d2 old. no one is using okay okay then then that brings us right back to what the hell is the difference between china d2 and america d2 we'll, we'll never Nothing. know <laughs> <laughs> it could be so uh, many so things Someone, someone so the only difference, us, the, the only us. difference china's not using powder they're using bicycles and you know yeah <laughs> wheels and whatever they can find and throwing it in the pot yeah oh, I, I am curious whether it's actually like you know the the formula that we all know for d2 like the 1.5 percent carbon 12 percent chromium etc or we or all know it, that by the way everybody, we all know everybody, that. everybody no, if knows you don't have you don't have your, you're telling me you're not like autistic and don't have all the steel percentages <laughs> memorized or if it's just like 9CR18 or whatever. Did you just reveal too much about yourself, Dave? That was a little bit of a me, pro a me problem.
Yes. <laughs> Maybe not a you problem. Um, but yeah, because like there's all AliExpress and whatnot. There's a bunch of companies that say that the, the knives are D2. The best way to figure it out is just like cut into something acidic. If it tarnishes, it's probably D2. Or just something without a lot of... Or just or shitty, just shitty steel. steel without a lot of chromium. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of that can have... Uh, yeah. It's heavily affected by the finish on the knife, yeah. you know. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah you know, uh, so you're never going to find out. Get it a, get a mass spectrometer. So your your way to tell if something is D2 is if it I mean, rusts. that's the first way to tell. Oh if, I mean, God. if it's stainless, it's, right. if it doesn't stain... There's a lot of holes in that method. I'm just Yo, well, I don't have a fucking way. gas mass spectrometer over here. Like, Well, we don't... The point is, no one fucking cares. Yes, China D2, though. I just love... China I love, D2. It's, so, it's like so D2, br- but from China. Yeah, so Browse is making knives in China. Yes. But now he's actually making China. knives in China. Correct. And then my mm. favorite is the fucking... Hoback Quayback, because this design has not been shoved down our throats like something else that Jake Hoback loves so much for like um, five years now. We've just been getting nonstop Quayback. No one wants it. But now we get one. But now we get one Ooh, with in aluminum got. with and D two for this like three hundred. This, this is the case cracker. I knew what I was missing out on in my life. It was an aluminum version. I'm so fucking sick of that design. It just came out from Custom Knife Factory out of nowhere, and it's like identical to the regular Jake Hoback model. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I'm not even done with this D2 argument. I'm just like, you can go where, ramble, where but I'm coming right back to it. Go go to Blade <laughs> HQ, select only knives that are listed as D2, and it says D2, and then read in the description of certain knives, such as Protec and perhaps this Microtech, and it goes further into detail saying it is CPM D2. All right. I think my point is just that we need to know which your, your D2 okay. okay. it's, a pro te- it's a protech and a microtech what year were those yes manufactured? many years ago they're they're both new they're both current yeah, that's probably some both old in stock, stock though some new old stock yeah, but it's probably right. old stock stuff L- let's look at this lt right let's see if it's what microtech CPM. is it Jake? uh hold on i'm, I'm too far i'm too far if past. it's something with a subframe lock you know it's old jake is too far <laughs> he's too far into this conspiracy <laughs> you went too like far. you said there's just not enough people using it to even worry about it. yeah that's that's he's all too we're getting deep at. into the d2 uh, maybe i'm the only one that that's that's been flooded with the argument about uh, no we talked about this before the uh, uh, isn't the west tennessee tennessee yeah. knife makers association which aren't they getting into this argument about essentially that Making fun of people who are making fun of D two out of their Which own. It was very confusing because I had no idea ignorance. where where they were actually going with that argument at first. I don't know, but there it, too it many blew up. To it. It, kind it of like us. That, that's all everyone was talking about on at least on my Instagram feed. So I wanted to. I just want to get to the D2 bottom. D two truther. I need yeah. I need to know which version of D two. Is that Tell like me a the earther? Version. But he will D2. not allow these injustices to happen. I'm more like a. The, like a conspiracy theorist who turns out to be right. Bush did CPM D two. <laughs> <laughs> Snap the blade in half. You can. You'll be able to tell. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the grain pattern. I, this, it's not even that. It's. A, I don't even. I don't care which one it is. I just. I just want people to adopt the the more specific nomenclature. So what we learned in this episode is that Jake is pedantic. Mm. <laughs> Only when everyone in the knife industry is arguing about the same damn thing. It's, it's you against the world. You're like two. Because three letters could have been fixed by three letters. I'll let you guys. I'll let you move on. Go ahead. Sh- should we answer some, to. some questions? I think that's all we have left. Let's, let's yes, because questions. I actually have to wrap this up. Uh, let's see. What's the question? So we kind of tiptoed around that one. Yeah, about, we, an- we answered brown knives. Yeah, question. we tiptoed around the one about knife makers. Well, and Floyd. So extreme addiction. Um, he says he started putting D2 lock inserts with ceramic with ceramic detents as standard back in 2012, and somehow now it's a big thing. Yeah, but the question actually the question follows that. Yes, I was waiting just. To, I mean, just you know, there were a lot of custom said. makers doing it. Like, yes, that's true. Not he, he gets some credit for that. Is he this goes, the right time for me to talk about ceramic detent balls? No. <laughs> That was too no, big. No, 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 no. That was way too no, big. No, definitely not. <laughs> They're a scam. Oh, Save God. it. Yes. Steel is better. Oh, wow. Okay, that's... Yeah, you're going to have to expand on that in a different episode. A different episode. I will. I will. I'm going to send... I'm going to bust out a microscope, and I will tell you Do and the show science. you why. Go on. I'll so, be wearing a lab coat. 
what Sergey wants to hear about is definitely talk about good and bad sides That's of custom knives, ordering, and overall experience. Right. Yes, we will. We would love to talk about that more in another episode. But thank uh, you. Let's see. Thank you very much, buddy. Lockbar, people, Lockbar are concerned about Hinder. Well, he, he, why did they do it? No one's ever had a problem. I did, so there we go. <laughs> I love Epic Snuggle Bunny. We need to convince Brian to put up a free hug sign at his table. Well, that at was Blasio. easy to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Brian already responded to that. Let's see. Um, Let me. Re- can I read it in his voice? I mean, is everyone loves his it. response. That'd be good. No way. Too many sweaty, <laughs> non-showering motherfuckers. I mean, He's not wrong. <laughs> you really want to be? He's not. Oh my god! There's some stinky people there. That's. I mean, that's true. It's. It's in Atlanta in Atlanta, the middle of the summer. Middle of the summer. Oh, like, oh shit! Dude, it's so hot. Here's now. an actual one. How, Brian, how do you feel about your mini typhoon being shipped to Nick Shabazz for review? This could make or break you at this point. He's got like a bajillion followers. Who? Wait, where did this uh, say Bird this? Shot said it like 20 minutes away. Bird, Bird Shot four on your uh, on your Hinder photo. <laughs> Say anything you want about it. I got 30 more left to make, and then I'm moving on. So it doesn't matter. Uh, we had a cu- someone ask why you used S90V in an email. They, like, wrote us a formal we email did. talking so that, about S90V. You, you, you know, we got a, we've talked about that last time, didn't we? We might no. have. Yeah, I thought we talked about that last, last, last did time. Did we talk about it? Benchmate just we talked about the advantages of S90V while they were... Uh, 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 their representative was very excited about their their little uh, sk- you know Skinner the, with the, the carbon the bolster in in S ninety. I, like, I like S ninety V. The reason yeah. I did this last knife in it is I promised myself it would stop me from hand rubbing any blades. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, I did still did a few, but um, yeah, I'll do some. I can do something different. It's not a big deal. A lot, a lot of people don't like them because they can't sharpen carbides. Yeah, that's you know cause, yeah, because yeah, I mean, yeah, but it stays I, I, but it stays lo- sharp longer. So I've literally I actually use my mini typhoon probably more than any of my knives, and it's still it's sharp. Still sharp. I'm getting yeah. one soon. It's happening. I have the money. Mm-hmm. That means that your heat treat guys did a good job, Brian. They should. I paid out the fucking nose for <laughs> hey, it. Hey, Brian, do you accept uh, payments over seven months in seventy dollar increments? <laughs> <laughs> No, bird birdshot. You know, Speaking of which, birdshot also asks, says, uh, to "Ask Brian how he constantly maintains such a jovial and merry demeanor." Mm. <laughs> and by it. hand rubbing S ninety V for three yep. days straight, mm. that's how. I also like to give a shout out, a sh- a shout out, a shout out to uh, the birdshot couple because they actually sent us a text the other day saying how much they really enjoy the podcast and uh, they are completely caught up. So I don't know how they did that because that is a lot of podcasts to get through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they gave it right back to you. their third question in a row or, or comment was, uh, in all seriousness, we love you, Brian. You are the man. Oh, except they don't, they don't love you that much because they hated the finish on, the, on the, on their, uh, on their uh, mini typhoon that they specced. I mean, it was really hideous. I didn't pick it. I know you did. not It wasn't it? your fault. They did. they did. How are you going to pick something you don't like? I, the the uh, worst part of it, cause, I, you know, I knew blasted over this color with this, and I even tried talking them out of it. I even said, are you should think about it, and that's what they wanted. So what did they do, like some sort of purple frame and like baby shit screws or something? Yeah, mm-hmm. I forget. All I that. remember. It was it was really bad, but they had it re-anodized by the Emler Edge. But, cool. you, you know what? I need yeah. to check and see if that 3D uh, Mini Typhoon is still on Blade Forums. For five forty-five, that was a good deal. Yeah, not as good a deal as Brian gave you on the one that yeah, you, was, uh, you know. I just, I can't do. I just, ah, I wanted it. It's just, <laughs> I'll, I'll wait until my line, uh, until I come up in line. I have a blade here for. I have the blade here for you. I just, uh, I haven't been paid for a month now. I need. I'm trying to get shit out. You know, it's since I've been hurt and came back though. Everybody's backing out. Uh, so it's kind of aggravating that I build I mean, a knife and then now. you should have your own financing plan. <laughs> yeah, the, the seven <laughs> months, seventy dollars a month plan. Never get the money. Oh my god! <laughs> that what happens to those people is they finally end up realizing that I really can't afford the knife, and now they want their money back, and 
it's now I've been sitting on this for six months. You know, it's just for me, it's not worth doing that stuff. I, you know, you, you ordered a knife. I understand it might not come up at a great time for you. Guess what? I can't. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm doing it as fast as I can. Yeah. You know, so it's uh, if you can't go through with it, you. I mean, if you can't come up with the money, then just you're not going to end up getting it in the in the end. So don't be upset. And by the way, when you do that to me. And you re- finally respond, yeah, I'm not going to take it back or whatever. Um, you get blacklisted. You don't get, re- you, don't, you don't get a response from me saying, oh, well, thanks for letting me know or whatever. It's because you wasted enough of my fucking time. I'm not even sending another email. Mm. Thanks, though. And in parentheses, it says, sent from the floor of my <laughs> shop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's actually still laying there. I, I was <laughs> His still wife up, never man. came home. <laughs> Speaking of which, my, my wife who does not care at all about any of us, asked last night, so it was like, how's Brian doing? Wow. I think I, I showed her the picture of you, your view from the floor when you fell and couldn't get up. And uh, I, I don't know what you did, but you won her over. I, I, we're going to have to take this off, offline. I was almost in tears I, from I the some pain. Question. That's it was, uh, it was a crazy. tough one. And then you, don't, you take it for granted that you, you know. That you can move. That, yeah, I mean, literally, I didn't eat for the 10... I, I was stuck in a chair for basically 10 days. Mm. Um, I couldn't eat for 10 days because I couldn't even wipe my ass. Jeez. Well, I think I speak for all of us when I say I, we wish you had died. <laughs> I mean, glad, glad, glad that you're feeling this. Th- thanks, I think. <laughs> all right. <laughs> just, just, just to get you out of the pain. Just you know? to drive out of the value of your knives up. Oh my god. You and Brian, <laughs> you and Brian tie in the big knife shop in the sky. Oh, fuck. Is, this, gonna is something about the name? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Brian's hilarious. Are just, you, Brian Ty, and then eventually Brian Lai will also be there. Brian, Brian Lai! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. No, there we go. There's the art. You just gotta Photoshop them in the heaven together. Levon, who, who was the, the knife maker who the guy shouted from across the store? About it, we remember we we picked up a knife to to look at, and the uh, the guy that was working behind the counter at Country Knives screamed ac- across the store like he's dead, you uh, know. Bob Lum? Uh, Bob Lum. It was Bob Lum. Was, you're right. I, I can't you. really think of that many besides like uh, William Loveless, which I assume there was not a Loveless at <laughs> Country that, Knives. I mean, talk about a sales <laughs> pitch. I mean, my, he screamed the whole store turned around like, "Holy crap!" I guess, he's, I guess he died. <laughs> who's that? I guess he thought that 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 made us want to buy the knife a little more. <laughs> uh, that's that's. They're they're bringing back uh or they're um bringing back the Lum Tanto. Spider Co is doing a, yeah. a sprint run for Play HQ. Mm, don't really want it actually. It's no. not a design I like that much. I I I love his designs in general. I like his designs. Just the the Spider Co Lum Tanto is just I'm not my favorite. Um, do we have anything else to talk about? No. Because he yeah. wants to get out of here. Yeah. I, he's got, an imp- he's got a, a, a fun work thing to do. I got a fun Very work fun thing work to thing. do. All right. So let's wrap yep. this up. Um, so in other Knife Nuts news, we'll be back with the next episode, and Elijah Isham will be yeah. joining oh, us. Oh, and we yeah. um, have something going on with WorkSharp. So... The people from Ooh. WorkSharp, I think the company's name is Darix. I don't want to get that wrong. But anyway, they're going to be sending us some WorkSharp stuff to check out and review. And then also there's going to be a series of giveaways. Um, we don't know the details yet, but we're going to be giving away some uh, WorkSharp stuff. Should be cool. We'll probably ruin some oh, knives, yeah. too. Yeah, that, well, Jake fun. will ruin the knives. I'm not letting it go near mine. <laughs> <laughs> he's put, you know which knives he's going to use. The, Ch- the Chinese, oh god, the Chinese collaboration typhoon is finally going to reach its end. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake, you oh, should cool. sharpen things that aren't knives. Sharpen, sharpen. I will. Yeah, and uh, Stella's plastic spider co. I will. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah. you know, how's the, I will. How's the edge retention yes. on that Delrin. Uh, better than you would think for a plastic. <laughs> it's like regular D2, but not it's CPM. It's like China D2. D2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like China D2. That's CPM what the D in, in, Del- in D2 stands for. It's Delrin. Well, that's a good place Delrin to add. Too. Holy shit. As we're saying this, the bir- Birdshot just gave us a shout out on their Instagram. Look at that. Nice. 
It's like they. It's like we, it's I like knew that knew. was happening. I'm definitely naming this episode China D2. <laughs> China D2 is definitely yeah. what this is called. Uh, <laughs> but Man. yes, make sure you guys check out uh, tackleoutdoors.com. That's tackle, like not tactical outdoors. It's tackle, like. Like, like there's, isn't there like a big fishing foot- tackle or yeah, or like there's a big football game next oh, week, yeah, right? That. Tackle yep. outdoors, check it out. Remember, you get after fifty bucks on knives. I think you get f- uh, free shipping, and then knife nuts as your as your promo code gets you another ten yes. percent off. Also, we it's should shout great. out. Uh, I don't know how to say his name. G- G- Graham. Gra- Graham. Graham. B. Graham. Graham, it's just it's Graham. Just Graham. Graham. Shout out to Graham B, the only person who entered our "Throw Your Shit in the Creek" challenge. This video oh, is yeah, buddy. legendary. This man <laughs> is an, is a national treasure. He <laughs> took a CRKT and fucking whipped that thing into a lake. Yeah, but it's funny because I couldn't Big tell lake. if that was like an M Tech or a CRKT. Oh, I, I mean, he he threw something into a lake. I know what it was, but it was it was a tearjerker. I I, I really it wanted to put it. I need to put that to some music. Like nowhere in in that challenge did we say that you have to f- throw it so in, that it could irrecoverably. Never yes, that shit's never coming back. He, I mean, that was that was so much more than I was uh, expecting. He went. He really went yeah. above and beyond. It was, it was you'll, beautiful. You'll get something, Graham. You the real. Yes, Graham. You, you were, the real MVP. You really are. You did such a great job that we're still arguing about how huge of an awesome thing yeah. to send you. That's that's seriously why you haven't gotten anything yet because we haven't been able to agree. I, I'm waiting for the the bank to get back. I'm gonna I'm putting a lien on my house, and you're <laughs> getting you get your money. Uh, you're getting a, a Haas mini mill and and a manservant, or the same CRKT, <laughs> or the same, <laughs> the same, same, same knife that uh, already <laughs> pre rusted. Yeah, we're gonna get it out yeah. of the lake and bring it back to you. <laughs> that would be the most funny thing ever if we hired like a dive team to go find that fucking like night. This is a super millennial reference. The beginning of that Britney Spears song with the with the excerpt from Titanic about finding the diamond at the bottom of the ocean. That's gonna be us with the CRKT. Mm, except it, yeah. won't be, it won't be a diamond. Won't be as stupid as that reference. Mm, yeah. <laughs> It'll be All right. Anyway, that, we are. On that note, everyone, we're thinking of you, buddy. Check us out on knifenuts.net. You can follow us at Knife Nuts Podcast on Instagram. Knife Nuts Dave. I changed the name. Knife Nuts Dave on Instagram. Yay. Keeping that brand unity strong. And uh, still missing the rope on the platforms. You can even like us oh, yeah. on Facebook, Facebook. now. On Facebook. Yeah, it's a Facebook thing. Although none of the stuff that I post there seems to show up. I fucking hate Yeah, because we haven't paid like a million dollars to have our, our content boosted or whatever. So, yeah. Dicks. Brian, where can people find you? Sharp if you haven't figured it out by now, around. then don't bother. Or just talk over him, whatever. <laughs> I I did. Brian, you can say that again now. Um, no, now too late. No more. It. Now you're fucking ruined it. Yeah, uh-huh. he's still sharp by design. It's sharp by design. It hasn't changed. You all knew that. Bye, everybody. We'll see you next time with Elijah. Isham. See ya later.